Guys, living on junk food? Stop. All right, guys. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I started a couple minutes early. This guy, Rabbi Lewis, reached out to me. So I talked to him on the phone. He says he knows Yusha Evans. He met Yusha Evans. And he told me that Yusha Evans wouldn't debate me because Yusha Evans thinks I'm beneath him. So I said, all right. So he agreed to talk to me about Trinity versus Tawheed. But for the record, I've been told by people who know him, he's a waste of time. He's a joke, right? You all need Jesus, right? So, guys, if he's a waste of time, he's a joke, I apologize. But what I'll do is we'll answer the question, is the name Jehovah <clears throat> applied to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Is the name Jehovah applied to the Father and the Holy Spirit? So if he is a waste, I'll just block him, won't let him reach and contact, because he contacted me. So I'm going to show the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit <clears throat> is Jehovah. That's their name. So, Father, we love you and we praise you. We again ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your son, help us to love your son and obey your son and worship your son and become like your son in holiness and purity and righteousness and devotion and worship by the power of your spirit. Wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ and fill us with the Holy Spirit. We love your Holy Spirit. Bless this session, please, Father, that it will not be a waste. Save us from shaming the name of Jesus Christ. Confound all evil spirits and illuminate us with Wisdom from your Holy Spirit and fill my lungs and chest and throat with life and guide this conversation so that you'll be magnified in union with your son, the Lord Jesus, who will increase in us by the power of the Holy Spirit and wash us in the blood of the Lamb and our children and our loved ones. In Jesus' name, my daughters, have your way, Father. Have your way, Son of God, Holy Spirit. Have your way in Jesus' almighty name. Yahweh, the Father, Son of the Spirit. Okay, let's see, guys. Let's see. Okay. He just said, don't entertain my detractors in the chat room. We go way back. Okay. Well, Rabbi Luce, you're listening. We're going to keep on the topic. Trinity Tohid. Don't be running here and there. Let's do it by the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's see. Invite people. Invite people. Okay. So what should I call you? What should I call you? Okay. I should call you anything. Hello. Hello, my friend. Hello. Your sound's not coming in. I can't hear you. Do something. Can you hear me now? No, I can hear you. Yeah. So what should we call you, friend? You're not Rabbi Lewis. You're not a rabbi. So what should I call you? Call me Lewis. All right, Lewis. 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 All right, buddy. So <clears throat> you told me you used to be in Judaism. Now you're a Muslim, right? Because you know Yusha Evans. You met him, right? No, I've never met you. I've said before. Oh, you didn't meet him. How oh, before we get started, don't don't entertain them in the chat room, Andy. <laughs> it's okay. That's, just, That's all right. I'm not. As long as you keep on topic and you focus, we'll talk. But if they if you end up doing what they said, then we're not going to be here all night. So hopefully you'll stick to just discussing the issues, and we'll focus. And you're going to prove your detractors wrong, hopefully. But how did you con? Did you email Yushevins? Because you said you spoke to Yushevins. Well, how did you do that before we begin? So you should have did a a, 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 a Koopa, right? You did oh. a Koopa on um, a what? A Koopa. Koopa? Koopa, Koopa. I have no idea what a Koopa is. What do you mean Koopa, man? Speak. Aren't you fluent in Arabic? Uh, the way you're speaking Arabic, uh, that's probably a new dialect of Arabic. Oh, Khutba. <laughs> khutba. Okay, dude. I'm sorry, man. You sound like you're saying like a mini Cooper. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> You scare, yeah, man, you scare me, bro. I never heard of Koopa, man, unless you got your own dialect. Khutba. Uh, yeah, Koopa. Okay. All right. So what happened? So you were at the Khutba? No, I was listening to it. Um, This is back 2007. How did I come Only 28. So I was in high school back then, but he, I watched the lecture. And he was saying, yeah, you sh uh, Sam wanted to debate me, but I didn't want to do it one time because he was beneath me or whatever. Okay. <laughs> and All that's right. how I heard about you. That's fine. That's fine. That's good. Keep listening. Keep learning. Keep following me and vocab and <clears throat> David Wood. So, but you're not, you said you're not, uh, you were in Judaism, but you're following Islam now, right? Correct. I'm so you're not going to be changing on me because then you had a video. I didn't watch it. You had the Shia Muslim Yasser who attacks the Sunnis and the Sahaba. So are you Shia? Yeah, correct. I'm Shia. Oh, you're Shia, man. What's up, man? So then you're like the Mutazzali. You don't believe the Quran is uncreated. That's good. It's all good in the hood. All right. Yeah, so, so uh, 
What, what do you believe in? What do you actually well, believe I, well, in? Well, have you, before you were his Hebrew Israelite or Jew, into Judaism, did you come from a Christian background? Yeah. Were you a devout yes. Christian or you didn't know much about Christianity? I'm just curious because I just want to well, feel, yeah, because it's the first time he talked to me. I don't know your background, so. Yeah, no, no, no. No, I grew up in a Christian school. I went to Christian school my whole life. So um, I grew up in a Christian church. And, you know, I went to Christian school. Was it Catholic? Was it Orthodox? What was it? Uh, what, what was it? Uh, Orthodox. Orthodox. Oh, Orthodox. Okay. So you knew your Christianity then? Do you know about the Trinity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't know me. about the Trinity all that. Okay, tell but me like, what the Trinity is, what they taught you. What is the Trinity? Right. Well, like I said, I I, 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 I got conscious through watching Zeitgeist. Like, you ever heard of Zeitgeist? Peter yeah, Joseph? yeah, that's fine. But what was the Trinity before you left it? And Zeitgeist and all that, Mithraism and all that. I understand. But I'm asking you, since you said, yeah, you knew the Trinity. What was the Trinity? What did they teach you? What was the Trinity? When you were being, when well, you were, I'm, probably, I'm, I'm 28. I was, um, I was just a kid. Like I was like 12, 11 years old. So I didn't, I didn't retain much. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Now, and as a Muslim, you say you believe in Tawheed, right? Of course. You're the oneness of God. Okay. okay. Of now, oneness of Allah. Now you believe the crown is the word of Allah, correct? Obviously. Oh yeah. Nah. Okay. That's good. Nah. I like that. Now nah, Vietnam. So this is Saigon. Okay. Now, in, in the Quran, first of all, hey, before I ask you a question, I'm going to let you ask me a question because people say, well, you don't let, no, no. Because we're talking about Trinity, Tawheed, what's, what question do you have about the Trinity? Don't, now, don't give me five at a time. We can do one at a time. What's, it, what's your question about the Trinity? Since you say you don't remember much, you don't retain, that's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, I think you're saying that for the audience, bro. So it, could, it, could, it could be fresh. Fresh and uh, fresh and so no, but I'm diagonal with so, you. No, on, you may have a dialogue. It's authentic, so it's not so robotic, it's, it's like authentic, authentic responses. Friend, uh, it, it is authentic because we don't have a script, and whatever question you have, it's going to have to be from the top of my head for me to answer it. So that's why me and you are dialoguing. They can ask questions later if I want them to ask questions of you because they're 99% Christian here. I don't want them to keep asking you. So if you have a question from here, do you want me to start the dialogue and ask you? Yes, we, we can begin the show. You can start asking me questions. Okay, you sure? All right. Uh, the Ruhul Qudus, the Holy Spirit. Who do you believe the Holy Spirit is? And I'm talking about from the Quranic perspective, not the Bible. Yeah. Do you know? Who, I, I'm gonna say that for the for the debate because I don't want to. I want it to be authentic. My so friend, we're respect, having the debate. Talk. It. What are you talking about? This is the dialogue debate. Come on. What do you mean saving it? I just came on so we could do this. Do this. Talk to me. Okay. Sure. Sure. It's, it's your panel. I'll, I'll oblige. Hmm? Who, let me ask you, who's the, who was the first thing Allah created? Mm -hmm. You're talking about in the Quran? Yeah, who's the first thing Allah well, created? Well, do you have not, a contradiction? Not, because the Quran says at one time. Go so, to, I'll so, give you the verses. Are you asking me or are you going to talk over me? Well, let's, let me answer you. Go to Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 29. Open it for me. Chapter 2, verse 29. Okay, I'd have to pull it up. Hold on. Okay, read it up. Yeah, because you asked me Quran. Because you're a Shia, you don't follow the Sunni Hadith. You follow the later Shia Hadith. So, but in the Quran, here you're asking me. So let's go with the Quran. I'll, I'll let the Quran answer for you. Yeah, if you could just tell me. All those okay, you want me to read it for you? Okay, I'll read the Quran for you. All right, I'm sorry, I don't know. Okay, just okay. I'll read for you. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter two, verse twenty-two, verse twenty-nine. He it is who created for you all that is in the earth. Then turned he to the heaven. And fashioned it as seven heavens, and he is knower of all things. Now, before you do that, I'm confused. How come someone has my nick here? My nick and it posted. For, sorry, bro, my brother in humanity. Hey, uh, what happened here, Protestant? Why is it that I said Sir 229 and someone posted with my name? Hold on, I think I got hijacked by my friend. Hold on. Can you help me out understand this? What who's this Shamunian? Why are you guys laughing, man? Oh, okay. I'm sorry, man. Someone just played the trick on me. He's got my nick, and I thought I got hijacked. Okay, let's read it again. Chapter 2, verse 29. One more time. Sorry about that, I'm guys. Sure we're live. Huh? We're live. Yeah, I know we're live, but we have someone in my channel. Live, Say it again. I didn't know we were live. What, what are you talking live? about we live? I said we're going live. What do you mean? Go, go to the YouTube channel. You were there. You even knew they were just saying, don't listen to my detractors. So you listen, right? Okay, I didn't know we were live. Excuse me. All right. All right uh, so now, do you want to, me to answer your question again, or do you want to go somewhere else now? 
Yeah, well, alhamdulillah, subhanAllah. Uh, I bet what is this no God, but Allah, Muhammad is his messenger. This is Rabbi Lewis, a.k.a. Louis Islam. Uh, I reached out to Sam Shimon for a debate. He obliged, so we're doing it right now. Kind of late night, hang out. But, uh, <laughs> so fresh. Hopefully this discussion will be, uh, be, be uh, riveting. Okay, it's going to be riveting, all right? So, Yom and I'll show you again, chapter 2, verse 29. Yeah, excuse me, okay. guys. I didn't know we were live. That's why I was saying this way before okay. we go for the debate. What do you mean? Okay. All right. So you want to you want me to ask another question, or you want to ask me a question about the Trinity? What do you want to do now? And so I asked them who who the Allah supposed Yeah, you don't need to, to talk to them. Talk to me. They hear you. Just talk to me directly. Yeah. Sorry. Talk to me directly. Yeah, and Sorry. put my sound down over there because I can hear you there. So I don't want to hear the echo. So go ahead. So what's the question? You want to ask me <clears throat> what did Allah create? You want to still stay on that? SubhanAllah. So the first thing, because most Christian apologists assert that Jesus of Nazareth was, was the first thing uh, Allah created. No, that's not uh, what we say. You're misrepresenting us. No, we don't believe okay. that. Don't tell so me what I believe about Jesus. Yeah. Don't tell Sam, me what I believe about Jesus. God. Yeah. So, well, you're asking me now what Allah created. So your Allah is not my God. So according to your Quran, it's confused. In one place it says the earth, then the heavens. In another place it says the heavens and the earth. So we can get to that. So you want me to answer that? Okay, so let me, let me respond. The first thing Allah ever created, the Azra Jal created, was a talking pen. The okay, show me that in the Quran. The show me that in the huh? Quran. Hold on, hold on. Lewis, I'm not going to let you get away with assertions. Show me in the Quran where it says that the first thing he created was the pen. Give me the chapter and the verse. That's in the, in the Hadith. Uh, what Hadith and what year was Allah, it written? Brother, the first thing Allah created was a talking pen. The what had these? What had these? Brother, hold on. Oh, no, you're not listening. See, no, 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 Lewis. Don't be trying to now give it. You're going to have to prove every assertion you made. What's the hadith? When was it written? Hopefully, you're not wasting my time because this, we're going to end the conversation. It's recorded. What hadith? When was it written? Okay, again, I'd have to, I'd have to give that. Hold on. Yeah, please do give but it. Before we. Before we come, Okay, go ahead. No, please do give it to me because I'm not going to let you make assertions, get away with it. I'm sorry, man. That doesn't work like that. We need proof. I can say anything. I can say the first thing Allah created was cottage cheese. What's the proof? When was the hadith written? By whom? Because you said you're Shia. You're not Sunni. So you don't go by Bukhari and, and Muslim. So what's the hadith? When was it written? So listen, can we go back? Because man, we're taking too long finding that deal. You want to talk about Trinity Tawheed now, man? Excuse me, guys. I, I this this debate was planned kind of spiritually. Yeah, it's okay. I well, did, it's uh, not spir spiritual. You're using the wrong, on, wrong term. You didn't, you didn't plan this, on a brother. So people know we didn't plan this. So I didn't have my notes together because we just planned this twenty minutes ago. Yeah, but so the no, first let's, thing, let's, lot, let's finish it though. Let's finish it. You, I asked you, do you want to go later tonight or tomorrow? Go within the next thirty minutes. So you said next thirty minutes. I was okay till tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so what's the hadith? You want to talk about the hadith? You want to go something else? Brother, I, yeah. I want to inform your audience. The first thing Allah created was Jibreel, the angel Jibreel. That was his Show first me in the Quran. With a soul. What does it say? The first thing he created was Jibreel, and that Jibreel is a soul that has an nafs. Show me that in the Quran. Don't make assertions. Prove it to me. Where does it say the first thing he created was Jibreel and the soul, nafs? Show me that. Now, while I'm waiting for the ayah. No. The first thing he ever, the first thing Allah as well, John created with the spirit. Okay, with the spirit show me where it says in the Quran, real. man. If you're gonna make me ask you, I'm gonna hang up on dude. Come on, stop playing games. Where does the Quran say the first thing he created was the spirit? I'm waiting for the ayah. Please give it to me, dude. We're wasting time. Already five minutes on a point you're not answering. Okay, I'll digress because I don't have the exact idea. We can go into the next discussion. Okay, so yeah, so you have to go to Adith. Okay, Quran. Okay, so again, let me ask you. Who is the Holy Spirit according to the Quran? Yeah, Jibril, Jibril was the first thing Allah created with okay. the soul. Show me where the, the Quran says Jibril is the first thing created and he was a soul. You keep confusing soul with spirit. Let me now educate you. In the Quran, the Arabic word for soul is nafs. This word for spirit is ruh. They're not the same in the Quran in the Arabic. And you'll not find a single place where Jibril or angels are said to be souls or spirits. That's why I keep saying, give me the first or the ayah. Now, if I'm wasting my time, you need a couple more years to come back and study this, then we can end it. I'll talk about something else.
Because you keep making assertions and you haven't proven anything. Give me the verse from the Quran. Again, that's in the Al Hadith. The Hadith with the word what hadith, hadith narration. What year, when? Because you're not Sunni Muslim. You go with Shia Hadith. And the Shia Hadith are even later than the Sunni Muslims. So you go into sources that are over 200 years after when your prophet supposedly died. Why can't you prove it from the Quran? So are we wasting time? Okay, we, we can go into a nice discussion because, again, I, I wasn't prepared okay. for But you're the one who said the next 30 minutes. Did I put a gun to your head? Yeah, no, 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 brother. Aki, Aki, we can have a Aki, conversation. what's up, Aki? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, listen. Uh, you want to ask me a brother, question we now? We conversation on the top. We can deal with the next topic. Okay, Trinity Tawheed. Okay, so I asked you because it has to do with Tawheed. Who is the Holy Spirit? I asked you who the, because it is about Tawheed. So why don't you ask me a question about the Trinity from the Bible? Do you have a question for me? Yeah, sure. So are you familiar with the Codex Sinaiticus? What about it? Sinaiticus or Sinaiticus? Yeah, what about it? Yeah, the Sinai Bible. You, you do know that yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. it's called the, the Codex Sinaiticus. Yeah. The resurrection verses, are, there's no resurrection verses in the Codex Sinaiticus. Give me the link to the manuscript the that shows. I, give me the link, so I'm not going right. to let you make assertion. I know what the Codex Sinaiticus says, so that's a lie too. But I'm going to be generous and say you're just parroting what you heard. Give me the link from the Sinaiticus and point me to the Greek page that doesn't have the resurrection. Send me the link in the comment section. Because on Skype, you can send me. Give me so we can click on it and I'll have you read the Greek for me and show me where in the Greek it doesn't have the resurrection. And you went to the resurrection. We're talking about the Trinity. So now notice they were right about you. You keep jumping topics. So, but give me the link to Codex Sinaiticus. I want to see it because the beauty of it is Codex Sinaiticus is online and it's in Greek. Since that means you're claiming what's there, that means you've read it in Greek. So I'm going to click on the link and you're going to click on it on your phone. I'm going to say, show me which page of the Greek of Sinaiticus doesn't have the resurrection. Do you want to go back to the Trinity? Because you made it about the resurrection. Okay, we can do it with the Trinity. Okay. Yeah, so you're oh. going to stop going on tangents, right? We're going to stay, we're going to stay on yeah. It's okay. Do you have a question we'll about the Trinity? Trinity? Yeah. Okay. okay, ask me a question about the Trinity, man. Okay. So what, what was the first thing that God created in, in the Bible? <laughs> well, first, before we do that, let me ask you, who, who named the Bible the Bible? Because the word Bible is not in the Bible. Uh, the, actually, the word Bible is in the Greek. Yes, that's wrong. Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. Do you have Matthew 1.1? 1, 1? Let's go to Matthew, Matthew 1, 1. 1. Yeah. And okay, who named the Bible? Bible? Who named the Bible? God Bible? did in the Bible. God did. Yes. And since you again God changed did. the subject, notice what you did again. You went to the Bible. Now here's my challenge to you. See, you can't keep on subject. They're right about you. But I'm going to show you the word Bible is in the Bible because it's the Greek term. I'm going to show you that. But before I show you that, show me in the Quran where it says the Quran is 114 chapters <clears throat> and <clears throat> the names of the chapters of the Quran. Show me that in the Quran. Okay, sorry. No, say it again. I asked you, Quran. Show me in the Quran where the Quran says Allah will send down 116 surahs and the names of the surahs. Is it in the Quran? No. Okay. Can you go to Surah, <clears throat> Surah Al <clears throat> Chapter 111 of the Quran, <clears throat> Surah Al Lahab, and can you show me where Chapter 111 says this is Quran revealed from Allah? Can, can you show me where chapter 111 says that? This is Quran revealed from Allah. Okay. You can't, can't substantiate that. I'm well, asking you know. to show me in Surah 111 because I'm going to answer the question Bible. I'm not going anywhere. But you change the subject again. This is now five times you change the subject. I said Trinity. You went, But I'm going to play okay, your that's, game. That's, okay. that's, no, no, wait, no, no, wait, wait. We're not going anywhere. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. So you keep doing that. When I stump you, let's let's say no, no. You had five chances to go to the Trinity till he, okay. you kept changing let's subject. Do with the Trinity. What okay. was the first thing that God before you? Well, hold Bible. on, hold on. Do you admit that in Surah One Eleven, Surah Al Lahab, Abu Lahab, it doesn't say this is Quran sent down by Allah? That chapter doesn't say that, right? Right. Okay. Now, good. Now, can you show me one verse in the Quran that says the Quran is the word of Allah? The Quran is the word of Allah. Can you show me that in the Quran? I can answer for you. It's not there. But I'm going to let you pretend 
that you you're you're gonna find it. Does the Quran anywhere say the Quran is the word of Allah? Okay, it's not in there. So now okay, so now can we, we stop changing stop subjects? Sure, the Trinity, strictly the Trinity, Trinity. We won't digress from the Trinity. Yeah, yes. Yes. What? What was the first thing God created? Well, look, if we read Scripture, it says the heavens and the earth, but it doesn't give me the exact what, order. What a soul? What, what, who, what a ruach? What a soul or spirit? What soul and spirit are you talking about? Whose soul? Whose spirit? Whose soul and spirit are you talking about, dude? The sky and the, and the moon and Adam and objects. Okay, so what, that, you, what, you, yeah, what are you asking me? Soul, spirit. Whose soul? Whose spirit? Are you asking me about God's spirit? Or are you asking me about angelic spirits and human beings and their souls? What, what are you asking me? Yeah. Whether it's an angel, a demon, a gem. Yeah, well, or we're told that in Hebrews, of, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6. Let's read it for you. Let me get it. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6. Let me just get I'm waiting for them to post. Are you posting Protestant this year so I can read it or do I have to bring it up? Did Joe Biden wait, come in wait. again? One second, brother. I'm just waiting for the passage. Okay. You alone are the Lord. Here goes. You alone are the Lord. You have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth and everything on it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve them all. The host of heaven worship you. So you made the heavens and the earth and all their hosts, everything in them. It means everything in heaven and earth he made, and the host of heaven worship him. So it says here he made them all. Okay, now let's go to Genesis 2 verse 1. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. <clears throat> you don't need to quote the Jehovah Witness Bible, Protestant. He's not a Jehovah Witness. Hello, Joe Biden. Okay, Genesis 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth, <clears throat> thus the heavens and the earth, and all the hosts of them were finished. So again, he created heavens and the earth, and everything in them, the host, that's angels and things on earth. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> Zechariah 12, verse 1. Zechariah 12, verse 1. You're asking about the creation of the spirit of man, the souls of humans. Okay. Zechariah 12, verse 1. Watch here. Let me read them for you. The burden of the word of Jehovah for Israel. <clears throat> for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretches forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and forms the spirit of man within him. So he forms and creates the spirit of man within him. Isaiah 57, 16. Isaiah 57, 16. 16. Okay. Isaiah 57, 16. Okay. Let's see here. For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wroth angry. For the spirit should fall before me and the souls which I have made. It's not about the souls of men. He made them right there. Now I'm going to give you a final one. Psalm 33, verses 13 and 15. Psalm 33, verses 13 to 15, specifically verse 15, verse 15. So <clears throat> let me get there. Psalm 33, verse 13 to 15. The Lord Jehovah looketh from heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioned their hearts alike. He considered all their works. So he creates their hearts, their souls, their spirits. He created all the hosts in heaven and on earth. So that's everything. So what exactly does this got to do with the Trinity? Okay, so is, is, is Jesus of Nazareth God? Is he your Iwate? It's, is he my what? Is Jesus of Nazareth your Iwate? Is he Hashem? I, I couldn't even hear what you said the first part. What was the first part? Is he my what? Is Jesus of Nazareth Yod Hey Vav Hey? Is he Hashem? Oh, oh you're saying the divine he name Yod Hey Vav Hey, which is in Exodus, yeah, three fifteen. Of course he is. He's the, he became flesh. Yes. He is Yod Hey Vav Hey. became flesh. That's easy. But what's the objection? Now the objection. Okay. Did did, your, did, your, did Jesus create the universe? Of course he did. Okay. He's created. Okay. So let's let's address the Trinity, right? Sure. You guys hear me? Yeah, they hear you perfectly. So go ahead. Okay, because we have some issues. Okay, so the, the RSV Bible, Revised Standard Version, okay. Revised Standard Version was written in 1950. So you're going through verses again. Notice what you're doing. You're talking about Bible transmission. I'm going to have fun with you because I'm going to show you missing verses of the Quran because the RSV Bible okay. has removed First John five seven. 
Don't embarrass yourself. Oh, you know about that. You know about that. No, because you I know, know your argument. You're parroting, you're parroting Ahmad Didat, and it's going to humiliate you because you're going to end up getting okay, embarrassed. Okay, well, let's do it. You're, you're going to say, for those who are yeah. confused. Maybe yeah, not, the RSV right? revival, the Bible doesn't have 1 John 5, 7. There are three that are record in heaven. Cut me off, bro. Cut me because same, I'm repeating your argument. You want me to hang up or you want to let me repeat your argument? Let me say what you're going to say. It, repeat your argument. The RSV Bible in 1952 came out, and 1 John 5, 7 has been removed, where it says there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, these three are one. Say, I made your argument better than you did. Okay, what's your point? Correct. The RSV version, which is praised. The RSV version has been praised by multiple. Can you stop um, parroting Ahmadidah? Because the RSV is going to embarrass you. I'm going to use RSV to show you the Trinity and that you don't know what you're talking about because you're a stooge of Didat. So, but go ahead. So now, what what about First John five seven? Yeah, like you said, it's it, the RSV version has been proven to be more active than the KJV, the NIV. No, the that's NLT, not true. Don't make the, assertions. The, 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 oh my God. Don't make assertions. No, no, because you're like friend. Please don't let me school you. You're getting recorded. Don't make fake assertions because you're parroting Ahmed Didat. That came out in the fifties. Certain people praised it. Others condemned it. So don't go there. Just make your arguments. What about for John 5, 7? Don't pair Didat. Stop reading the script because it's going to embarrass you. Didat has been debunked years ago. That's why you Evans won't debate me and you shouldn't have debated me. So what's your argument? Okay, so Dr. Libergott Frederick Kassi von Tischendorf. Okay, who send me the link. That? Send me the link. Hold on. Do you know who that is? Yes, you, Tischendorf you, is one who found. You went back to Codex Sinaticus. He's the one who found. Codex Sinaticus, uh, Sinaiticus. Right. Okay. All right. He was one of the, the staunchest, the staunchest defenders mm -hmm. of the Trinity. Okay. Uh, Dr. Th was one of the most adamant and staunch defenders of the Trinity. And he said, and I quote, the New Testament has in many passages mm -hmm. undergone such serious modification of meaning it is left as painfully uncertain as what the apostles would actually written. So you change, so you change it to manuscripts again, right? You change it to manuscripts again. Is that what you just did? Talking, just, no, hold on. You, did, you changed it again. So you're right. The detractors are right about you. You're a coward. You're not a man of your word. But that's okay. Because if the Bible is changed, you just destroyed the Quran. You proved Muhammad is the son of Satan. You sure you want to go there? I'm trying to save you from me humiliating you. Do you want to talk about 1 John 5, 7 or Bible manuscript? Now we're going to talk about the thousands of variant readings of the Quran. Have you read Dan Brubaker's book that just came out? When he examined the oldest extent Quran manuscripts and the changes and corruptions, and they're not uniform. Have you looked in that book? Yes, and, and I'm, I'm prepared. Oh, so you, you've looked at Dan uh, Brubaker. Yeah. Name me the manuscripts that he examined and how many changes in your Quran manuscripts. Yes, changes in the Quran manuscript. Bilal, Bilal the, the Sahaba, right uh, in the Where does the Quran mention the Bilal the Sahaba? Bilal had original copy. Where does the Quran, Quran mention Bilal? Give me the name Bilal from uh, the Quran. Where is in the Quran the name Bilal? Okay, it's not in there. But Bilal. Say it again. You, you're running. You're running. It's not what? It's not in there. And now that this hadith about Bilal, how many years after Muhammad are you? What hadith are you quoting? Bilal had an original copy of the Quran. What Hadith had says he has an original Quran? That's not Bilal. I want to end up embarrassing you because you don't even know the Hadiths. What Hadith and when was it written? You're about to get hung up on because you're a waste of time because you changed the subject again. And you got humiliated. Glory to God, it's now recorded. So no one never takes you seriously. What it's Hadith, brother, you, you, oh, what oh, hadith, hadith mentions Bilal? Saying. And what year was the Hadith? Have hadith in front of you don't have what? Me, we can continue. I don't have that deep in front of me. Can continue, this is though. now seven because times, no. seven times you change the subject. Seven stinking times. I'm going to give you a final well, chance to stay on the subject, the Trinity. Okay. Fine. What about okay, First John 5, 7? Before we deal with the Trinity, let's, see, let's deal with if Jesus didn't did even exist. Who was Philo about Alexander? Are you a Muslim? Philo wait, wait. You're a Muslim? Yes. And you're de denying Jesus existed? No. I'm saying... So yes, you change the subject. I'm now going to hang up on your face. A Muslim wants to debate the existence of Jesus, yet he believes Jesus exists as a Muslim prophet. Are you that much of a joke? I'm going to give you now. See, I don't I want to hang up on you. Don't I want to give you another chance. Give me a question about the Trinity, or I'm going to hang up on you. You wasted my time today. Okay, okay so let's deal with the Trinity. Who? Okay. okay. All right. Who was Philo of Alexandria? What about him? What does that got to do with the Trinity? 
Who was Philo? Do you, you know who he is? To the foot arm. Do you know who he is? Of course. Who was Philo? What Alexander date? What date did he write? I know Philo. Philo. Lived, he was contemporary with Jesus. He died in I think 100 AD. He was See, then again shows you don't know what you're talking about. 100 AD, 100 years after the birth of Jesus? No, he's from no, 40 Philo, BC Philo, to 20 AD. Philo. Let's right. get a let's get a, a time for Philo. Hold on, let me give you Philo. Make sure you ha make it related to the Trinity. If not, you're going to hear a dial tone. Yeah. I'm going to send you to Mecca to smooch the black stone. Tell me about Philo. Go ahead. Okay, His name was Philo Alexander. Yeah, I know who he is. Go ahead. Yeah, I know the logos. Yes, I know. Go ahead. Make he your point. He was born uh, 25 BCE. He died. Okay. We know he died. Okay, okay. BC. Okay, say twenty. Died, I say forty. Okay, good. Twenty to forty AD. Okay, forty AD. Right around that time. Thank you. Remember yeah, sometimes. Let me give it to you guys. One second. I'm pulling it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. He's pulling it out. Yeah. Okay. okay. He died. Good. Yeah, he, he he was born twenty BC. He died fifty uh, AD. So he died right around the time right after Christmas. Okay. They do a Philo never misses Jesus. And most so then hold on. So the Quran is wrong because Philo didn't mention Jesus. So why did your bastard Muhammad say Jesus existed? Easy to explain. His, Muhammad's real explain name was to me. So what's his name? His real name was Lotash Malthus. Okay, show me the source that says Muhammad's name was Lotash blah, blah, blah. All right. Man, this dude, man. Yeah, yeah, you, you can find this in Tony Bushby's work, The Crucifixion yeah, yeah, of the Troops. Right. Let, me, let me explain. Okay, man, you guys are right about this guy. He's a clown. All right. Now we can talk about something else. Sherry Love, you're calling me too? Sherry Lev, what is why are you interrupting me, Sherry Lev? Sherry Lev, what is what the, Hi, how are you, Brother Sam? Uh, I'd be okay if you put down your sound your uh, sound. Yes, I am so sorry. I was trying to call you before why? um because I, I'm very familiar with uh Lewis and, and, and plus uh, some of the people in your chat. First let me say God bless you. Um I, I listen to your channel all the time. Um I am Brother Bo Camp's um sister in Christ. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm too also a sister of Christ of yours as well. Um, I, I love your apologetics. I've been following you for years now. Um, so um, I, I love your work. Um, but Lewis has some major issues. Oh, well, you can tell. Um, He's got I'm mental issues. He's like mentally deranged. He's probably he needs to be put away in an asylum. Yeah, you can tell by talking to him. So but yeah, if, yeah. But life. anyway, he's, he's a waste of time. Sherry, if you have a question, let's make the most of it because people are here. They want to learn. Well, forget about this guy. So oh. you have a question? <laughs> well, um, well, I, I I do have one question. Good. Um, um, so far I'm on. Um, I do believe in the Trinity, of course. Sure you do. I know huh? that God mm -hmm. definitely sure trying you. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Um, I, I I um I've been recently um doing research in the Targums, yeah, uh, the Aramaic Targums, um, but I'm kind of struggling there a okay. little bit. What's, what's the um, struggle? Um, well, I, I, well I, I don't read Arabic, let alone speak it. Um, the Targums are in Aramaic. I, They're not in Arabic. They're in Aramaic. Or oh, Aramaic, Aramaic. That's what I meant. I'm sorry. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, I was, I was speaking with you, um, but um, I, it, uh, um, I, I know all the different ways to de uh, defend the Trinity, the regular ways. Um, but I wanted to know: is there any other additional passages that that can definitely show the Trinity? For um, where? Since I'm a P, I would like to know. What, 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 from where though? You confuse. You mentioned the targums. So, what a trinity from where? Well, I, well, I said I was kind of struggling a little bit. Uh, what you know, knowing uh, uh, how can I put this? Um, the the full the fullness of the Aramaic targums. So, why like, would I, I need to go like to the targums to prove the trinity? Why would I need to make my case from the targums? I don't get it. Well, I well that's what I okay maybe I'm not answering uh, asking my question correctly. Um, is the Aramaic targums um, the best way to prove the Trinity? Who said it's the best way? Why would it be the best way? No, I was just wondering. It, no, uh, because the targums are an Aramaic paraphrase. Jews who translated the targums into Aramaic, but who said they're inspired? We go to what is inspired, meaning the Old Testament books. Mm -hmm. They're written in Hebrew, parts of an Aramaic, 
like Daniel and Ezra. And if they're accurately translated in other languages, then we look to those. The problem with the Targums is it's more of a paraphrase where they introduce concepts and ideas that's not found in the Hebrew original. For example, if it says, let us make man in our image, that may be paraphrased to say the, Lord, the word of the Lord created man. See, that's not a translation that captures original. It's more of a paraphrase where they're giving you a commentary. It's like reading a Bible commentary on John. And the commentary is going into it and bringing out stuff and saying things that the original doesn't say. So I don't base the truth of the Trinity on the Aramaic Targums. The only reason we use the Aramaic Targums is to show that the Jews had an understanding that God had an agent distinct from him called the Word. That Word was sent by God. That Word was worshipped as God. That word claimed to be God, and the things that the Old Testament says the God, that God did, it's attributed to the word. So here's a concept of God and his word as two distinct divine entities. That's why we use it. So see, even the Jews saw that. So when John comes oh. and says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, the word was God, and the word became flesh, John wasn't making something up because the Jews before John, during the time of John, after John, knew from the Old Testament that God had this agent this messenger distinct from him who was God in union with him whom God sent to speak as God whom others worshiped as God. That's the only reason why we appeal to the targums or even to Philo of Alexandria. And I'm glad he mentioned the date because again, Philo's date is irrelevant to me, but yeah, it is 20 to 40 B 20 BC to 40 AD. He's an Alexandrian Jew. He is a Jew who's writing in Greek, and he's communicating the truth of Judaism in Greek. And he mentions the logos, the Greek word for word. And so here you have Jews before Jesus' birth, before John wrote the Gospel of John, who are already familiar with the word of God as a divine person, divine entity, a divine being, sent by God, who is God, claims to be God, is worshipped as God. So that's why we use these sources, but... The Aramaic Targums are not the best evidence for the Trinity. The best evidence for the Trinity would be the Hebrew Bible. I'm right. just taking notes as you're speaking. You see my point? So that's um, why you have okay. to go I'm into the sessions or into our articles and rebuttals. Read it. Read our material. Listen to the videos because we give you ample, ample evidence. Hours of teaching and reams of pages where we quote the Hebrew Scriptures to show that the Trinity is there. The Spirit is there. The Spirit is a thing from God, and yet He is a person, even in the Old Testament, who inspires prophets, empowers prophets, who creates and gives life. And then also the angel of the Lord and other figures. I've done it. Anthony Rogers. We have tons of videos. Act 17 Apologetics, my YouTube channel, Seer International, as well as articles for the blog, Answering Islam, blog.wordpress.com and answeringislam.net. So watch our videos. And even Michael Heiser. Michael Heiser is another man. Who, who heavily, heavily uses the Old Testament to demonstrate that even the Old Testament presents two divine persons as Yahweh, the invisible Yahweh and the visible Yahweh. So there's a lot of stuff there. Um, okay. Um, okay. So I, 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 I have to go in my okay, I'm familiar with Michael Heiser. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I, I uh, do apologetics against uh, Hebrew Israelites, yeah, from, which is from the main where thing. I used to live. Yeah, no, you're supposed to call me and hook up with me, talk to me about it, right? From my former neck of the woods, right? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they're terrible. Mm -hmm. um, they have a real big issue of trying to make Jesus created. Okay. Um, they they believe the that Jesus Christ is created. What's the proof? Um, what verses? Oh God! Um, so like, yeah, you give me some examples of Jesus being great, so I can adjust them. So why don't you do this? Why don't you go find them, call me back? Okay, okay, no problem. Find I'll them now. This was spur in a moment. That's what I'm saying. You were calling. Uh, you wanted to talk about Lewis. So now, why don't you go find the objections? Call me back. We'll I'll answer them. No problem. Because we're live streaming, so I'll take your question. So until you find the questions, I'll answer about the name Jehovah. If it's applied to the Father, Son, and Spirit. But that's why right now I'm live. So go find the arguments. Hunt them down. Say, hey, Sam, here's an argument. All right? And call okay. me back. Okay, but, and don't be scared. <laughs> just like breathe. I want you, when you hang up the phone, I want you to just say logos five times. You go, logos. Five times you'll be okay, all right? 
I sure will. <laughs> All right, sister, so call me back. I'll be waiting. We're Lord bless you. All right. All right. Okay, let's go, guys. I want to talk about. I'm going to retitle this. Well, I, yeah, I'll leave it, but I want to make sure because we got a good crowd. We had about 300 for the debate. We're still down around 270, and I hope we get more for the glory of Jesus. Now, I want to answer the question because I was asked the question, so we'll make it Q and A. But we have to title it appropriately so people will know how to find the answer. Right? You know, Dinu, you scare me. Dinu, I don't scare you. You scare me, girlfriend. Dinu is fit. She a, she a sister who loves Jesus, who's on fire for the Lord, and she's also a fit, beautiful sister, man. Man, she's tight, and she's got muscles, dude. Damn, I don't like to be around you because you make me feel fat, Dinu. Who knew that Dinu would make me feel fat? All right, well, that's it. Are we ready? And by the way, how many of you can bear witness? Hey, Razo, did you hear my previous session? I hope you did. It's about refuting Greg Stafford on Hebrews 1. But anyway, how many of you guys, how many of you guys, now heard with your own ears, rouse on everyone else. They use the word yaki. Did you hear it? Did you hear what he called me? It's now recorded. You thought I was lying to you when I said these guys that convert to Islam who don't know a lick of Arabic, when they say achi, they go yaki. Did you hear it? And then I started mocking them. What's up, yaki? Okay, now that's proof. Now, hold your questions. I'll take question Q and A. The guy even robbed me of going, I was going to go walk in the mountains, man. I live in a beautiful place. I was going to go walk in the mountains. But anyway, I'll go walk outside, Lord Jesus, by his grace and protection. Burn some more calories. But anyway, uh, yaki is supposed to be the English way of saying achi. Achi means my brother. Ya'ach, achi. Let's answer the question. Here's the question. Are you guys ready now? You guys want me to do some teaching or should I shut down and come back tomorrow? Oh, Moses, are you making fun? Are you blaspheming? Or are you asking a sincere question? He just said something that really took me by surprise. And I thought Moses was a believer. Hold on. He just said something that I hope he didn't mean it the way he did. No, not fun. Are you, a, are you a Trinitarian, by the way? Sorry, guys. Are you a Trinitarian? Do you worship the triune God, Father, Son, and Spirit? Do you believe the Bible is God's word? Uh, Gladatos, I got emails where his representative called and we accepted a debate channel, Michael Brown and I. I said, I'll debate S uh, Tobias Singer on the triunity in the Old Testament. And he's got to debate Michael Brown on Jesus being the Jewish Messiah. The coward never responded because Michael Brown puts the fear of God in him. So I have the emails for proof. So go to him and say, hey, Sam Shimon says he'll debate you on the Trinity in the Hebrew Bible. Take him up on it. And then he's got to debate Michael Brown on the Messiahship of Jesus. And then I'll do it as well. But who better than him? Now, Moses A, let's focus, guys. Don't change the subject. Oh, okay. Uh, Moses A, let me correct you. Let me correct you. And I have the emails, glad of this, Bob. I have, I have them saved so people can't say I'm lying. Because I know his followers are going to try to spin and lie. Because like he spinned it about why he won't debate Michael Brown. Moses A, Okay. Can you show me in the text where the men of Sodom knew that was the Trinity? Can you show me where the men of Sodom thought that was actually the Godhead and not simply mere men that they wanted to ravage? Can you show me that, Moses A? Because I have yet meet, to meet a Trinitarian who says he's a believer who would say this. Guys, now you tell me, do you think this man's a believer? When he said earlier, man, how you know, Adam wanted to sleep with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Spirit, destroy the buffering in Jesus' name, please, Lord, destroy the buffering. Yeah, Allah. Okay, hold on, guys, it's buffering. Okay, why? What Christian in his right mind would say that? Okay, does that come out of a mouth of a Christian? You see why I'm saying this guy think he's a, he's a scum? He's a dog of the devil pretending to be a Christian? What Christian would say that? Okay. How could you love Jesus and speak so insultingly of the Lord? Yeah, please don't ever speak that way of the Lord. Don't ever use that language. I'm really having our time not blocking you, to be honest with you. Because I don't know, unless you're very stupid... You're very stupid 
to talk of the Lord this way, to say that this is what they wanted to do to Jesus' Holy Spirit. See, I'm, I'm not the Holy Spirit, so I can't say, but man, that really sounds like you blasting the Holy Spirit. That's how it sounds like to me, to say what you said. And I'm even disgusted to repeat what you said, right? Anyway, man, mods, what, what do you guys think we do? Should we leave this guy or should we block this guy for what he just said? What do you guys think? What should we do because of what he said? All right. He keeps saying he's sorry. All right. Let's let's leave him alone. Weeping sorrows. What do you care if they're the Trinity or not? Are you an anti-Trinitarian to make my day? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Let's let's focus now, guys. Let's focus. And please, mods, if you have satanic distractions, get rid of them, please, for the glory of Jesus. Okay. Sherry's got – she's here with her objections. Oops. Sorry. Oops. Sorry. Sorry, Sherry. It should have been gone. Knowing how I made you feel. It should have been gone. After all, you were. Oh, Sherry. How her love holds on. Holds on. Oh, Sherry. All right, go ahead. What's your objection? <laughs> well, you got a nice voice. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, yeah, I'm still single. Okay, well, what? Sherry, but I'm still single. How does that work? Uh -huh. They say I got a nice voice. I'm good looking. Some say I think they're just being nice. But I'm still single, Sherry. What's the story uh, with that? Uh, oh, go ahead. All right, go ahead. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Well, the scripture I'm coming from is John three sixteen. Um, this is a twofold question. Okay. Um, so they like to use the Hebrew Israelites like to use um, for God so loved the world um, that He gave uh, gave His only begotten. So they like to take this word begotten and try to make it seem like that Jesus was created. Okay. Um, so that's the first question. The second one, what they like to use is um, basically saying where it says that um, for God to love the world. And of course, in the Greek, that's cosmos. Okay. They want to say that cosmos it's just only the world of Israel. Okay. So they believe that salvation is only for Israel. So alone. Jesus only so created the Jews? Jewish. He only created Jews? Because in John 1 yeah. 10 it says, He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, it did not recognize him. And that's right after saying in John 1 3 to 4, all things were made through him. So he only created the Jews, he didn't create the Gentiles. So who created the Gentiles? Ooh, Who created the Gentiles? Oh, God created the Gentiles. But in John 1, it says, the word through whom the world was made entered the world that he made. And that word, the world, in John 1, 3, is part of the all things that he made. How do you limit it only to the Jews? You, you can't. Okay, so that, that's how I would deal with that. But let me put that aside. Then another one. Do you have your Bible open? Um, yes, I have my Bible okay. up on my screen. Use the version that they have because Only Begotten is from the King James, New King James, New American Standard Bible. All the translations don't render monogenes as Only Begotten. But go to John 11, 49 and 52. John 11, John 49 11? 52. Yeah. Give me a second. My computer's a little slow. Okay. Okay. You said what verse now? John 11, 49 and 52. 49 and 52. Yes, sir. I'm here. Read it for me. And, and one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, ye know nothing at all. Verse 50, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. And this, 51, and this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. And that nation is what? That nation is what? That nation would be Israel. Okay, well, you're guessing. It's right there in the context, the verses before. So who's it referring to? That, that he's referring to Israel. Okay, so notice, he doesn't just die for the nation Israel. Who else? 
<laughs> and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together and one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Okay, now my question is, if the whole nation of Israel, that refers to the tribes, whoever the children of God are that are scattered abroad are not the nation Israel. It has to be Gentiles. Hmm. Because the whole nation Israel includes everyone. When you say the nation of Israel, that's everybody. The whole nation. Because that's what it said, that one man perished and the whole nation perished. Nation of Israel. Well, nation of Israel, that's the entire nation, all the tribes included. So and then who are these other children of God that he's going to bring in? Because he's not just going to save the nation of Israel, but also save the children of God who are scattered. That's the Gentiles who are scattered all over the world that are called to be a people for God. But they try to argue and say that the Gentiles that are mentioned in prominent places where we see that uh, salvation is being extended to them, they try to say that that's the northern kingdom. That they can that's say what they want. Manessa, yes, see, they can say what they want. Where does the Bible make that distinction that the northern kingdom is called Gentiles in distinction to the southern kingdom? They can say what they want. Prove it. Okay. Where are okay. where are the verses that say the northern kingdom Israel that's the Gentiles whereas the southern kingdom those are the Israelites? Nowhere. Okay, so Nowhere yeah, and see this is the thing. If you're gonna keep engaging them on that level, they they can say anything and everything and you're gonna get nowhere. Prove it, like I did with the the guy Lewis. You know what I said? You made an assertion, prove it. What you're trying to do is you're trying to prove them wrong. No, they have to prove their right. So why are you now allowing them to shift the burden on you? Prove it. Show me that the northern kingdom is called Gentiles and not Israelites. Okay. You want me to? I'm, I'm just taking all of these notes. I'm, yeah, I'm taking all of these notes. So you're going to learn. Yeah. You're going to have to learn the art of learning how to engage in productive apologetics. Where you're not wasting time or breath, but getting to the heart of the matter to destroy, demolish arguments, so you leave them with no excuse to fall in love with Jesus. So if you keep okay. if you keep letting them make these assertions, say chapter and verse, give me your proof so I can look at it. Let me yes, see. Yes, I do ask them that. And what well, verses did they give they, they, you? Well, I do ask them that. Well, just like the um, the the situation with Lewis, they do not like to answer questions. Okay, so whatsoever. then why are you wasting your time? Okay. You have to you have to be discerning. You do not engage people for the sake of engagement. Then that becomes a battle of egos because even Jesus said in Matthew 7 verse 6, do not give what is sacred to God, dogs or cast pearls before swine lest they trap them over on their foot. You see what I did with Lewis? I hung up and blocked them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see? Um yes, I hung sir. up and blocked um, them. Not that's now, what I, do. I do have another um, but you never, situation. But you never answered with, the only begotten. See, sister, your mind is all over. You're still nervous. Don't you want to know the answer to the only begotten? Yes, yes. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm just a Your friend, nervous. you got so <laughs> confused. You got confused. And Listen, I'm flesh and blood like you. I'm no better than you. You know? I, I know. I What's know. What's up, I your friend? Because you're one of my favorite apologists, so... <laughs> You know, I mean, I, I, I'm all, just happy to speak to you. All, all I, one thing I can tell you is I am better looking than vocab. That's a fact. But be, put that aside, girlfriend. <laughs> I'll make sure I tell him you said that. Oh, yeah. You know, he's a hater. Okay, now let's focus. John 3, 16, okay. go there. John 3, 16, go there. Okay. Dinu said, don't be afraid of me because Dinu with her, her tone, muscular physique, she's going to smash my face in. Guys think I'm, they, by the way, Sherry, they think I'm exaggerating when I say Dinu is actually in shape. She's like tight and ripped. They thought they think I'm lying. She's <laughs> tight, man. It's all, it's, and I'm sick because she came up to one of the conferences. She's like just, you can, a fitness model, you know? So she's scary. Mm. And I'm like, man, please stay away from me because I got love handles nobody loves to handle. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. All right. John 316, let's go there. Okay, John 3, 16. I, I'll start at 15 for context. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You skipped life. the first part of the well, verse. God, oh, I'm sorry. You went to John oh, 3, 15. I apologize. Because John 3, 15 is also repeated 
in verse 16. I apologize, sister, because really, if you want to start context, you should start at 14, girlfriend. But go ahead. Go to John 3, 16. Go ahead. Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, so the objection is this, so people understand. The objection is, see, Jesus is begotten of the Father, and if someone is begotten, that means he's created. He didn't exist before he was begotten. So guys, understand the objection. If you beget someone, that someone is a creature that came into being, because before you begot him, he didn't exist. So you understand the objection? I just want everyone to follow with you. Everyone understand what the objection yes, is in John 3.16? Because I want to help them too. Because you're benefiting us. Because these questions is going to help them learn how to answer. Okay. Here's the response. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Who told you that to be begotten means you didn't exist before the act of begetting? Where did you get... That if I am begotten, that means I didn't exist before I was given birth to. Where do you find that in the Bible? Where does the Bible say, if Sherry is begotten, that means she didn't exist before that act of begetting. Where's that in the Bible? It's not there. It's nowhere. Let me show you now in the Bible. I'm now going to show you from the Bible that there are persons who said to have been begotten, but they existed even before the act of begetting. Now, guys, I want everyone to listen and do me a favor, folks. It's not because he gave me a super chat, but I just read it. Victor Massey, remind me to pray for him. He has stomach issues for a long time. Guys, do come in agreement and in your heart now pray that the blood of Jesus will heal him, extend his earthly life to have many more years to glorify Jesus on earth and pray for Magdalene. She also has health issues for all of us that Jesus, if he's pleased, will extend our earthly life and use every year to glorify him on earth until we enter his presence. And it's better to be in his presence than on earth. But may, may we be used for the glory of Jesus Christ. So we'll pray for you, Victor, before the night is over. Remind me by the grace of God. Now, for the rest of you, do pay attention. Pay attention to what I'm, you're going to learn right now. You're going to learn that in the Bible, there are individuals who were begotten but existed before they were begotten. Are you with me there? Mm -hmm. Now, I know yes, you're sir. with me there, Sherry. I just want to make sure everyone's getting it. Are you ready now? I'm going to show you the word begotten. Individuals who are begotten, and yet they existed before they were begotten. And I have two articles on this that I'm going to give you the links to in a minute. Okay, Psalm 2, verses 6 to 7. Psalm 2, verses 6 to 7. Psalm 2. Um, six to verses seven. six and seven. It's talking about the king of Israel. Now pay attention. Psalm two, verses six to seven. Did, did you want me to read that? No, of course. Uh, you want me to just read your mind? Read it. Come on, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yet, uh, yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Verse seven. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Now understand what he's saying to the king. He says, on this day when my king sat on the throne and began his rule, that's the day that I begot him. Did you guys catch it? I want everyone to catch this. Jesus, or I should say, God is speaking to the king. And he says to the king, you are my son. Today I've begotten you. What day? The day that you sat on the throne representing me, ruling for me. Guys, can I ask everyone a question? Ask everyone a question. Before the king began his rule on the throne, was he already alive? Before David began ruling as king, he was around 33 years old when he was ruling Judah and 40 when he started ruling the entire nation, right? Again, I'm going by memory. May the Lord forgive me. I hope I'm not mistaken. So was David already alive before God begot him to be his king on the throne. What's the yes. answer? Yes. So here you have the act of begetting, and yet the one who was begotten already existed even before he was begotten. Yes. You guys got that or no? Yes, sir. Okay, well, I'm going to give you another example. I just want to make sure you're getting it. Okay. All right. Now, let's go to Hebrews 1. Verses 3 to 5, because now this is applied to Jesus Christ. Hebrews 1, verses 3 to 5. Yes, sir. 
Hebrews chapter one. Yeah. Hebrews one verses um, three to five. When we go there, folks, you're gonna see that Psalm two seven is applied to Jesus after his resurrection and ascension to heaven. And where he sat at God's right hand. It's not going to be applied to Jesus when he ascends to heaven and sits at the right hand of God. Hebrews 1, verses 3 to 5. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Verse 4. Being made so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Verse 5. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Okay, so when, and again. No, you're going all the way to all the way to uh, six. You can stop at five. Read five again. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Now, guys, notice there's side talk in the comment section. Confidence in Christ's ministries is engaging someone, Isaiah 9, 6. That means neither him nor the other person is paying attention. They're on their own agenda talking about an issue to distract other people. You see, again, violation of the rules. No respect for me or the other people on the channel. That's why they're going to be blocked maybe in a minute. But I want everyone else to listen. Everyone else to listen. When did Jesus, when did Jesus fulfill Psalm 2-7? Because in Hebrews 1 verse 5, it says, For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten thee. And again, I will be a father to him and he will be a son to me. I will be his father, he will be my son. When was that fulfilled? In Hebrews 1 verses 3 to 5, when did Jesus fulfill that? Read it again. You'll see it. That when did he fulfill to, it? That goes back to Psalms 2, doesn't it? When was it fulfilled in Jesus? It's irrelevant about Psalm 2. I know it's about Psalm 2, but when did Jesus fulfill it? It's right there in the text. You got to read it. That's why it's not enough for you to read. You have to read with understanding by the power of the Holy Spirit. So in Hebrews 1, verses 3 to 5, when did Jesus fulfill Psalm 2, 7? When did God say to Jesus, you are my son today, I've begotten you? Let's see who caught it. That's Hebrews oh, when 1. he was baptized. Sister, if you show me the word baptism there, I'm going to retire from apologetics and start cooking for a living. <laughs> well, in I, Hebrews 1, he why'd you go to the Gospels? It's there in front of you. Why are you going to another book to understand what Hebrews is saying? It's right there. That's why you got to read. If you're in apologetics, you got to understand. Don't be nervous. Focus. It's right there. When was this fulfilled? Backtrack, read it, 5, 4, 3. Verse 5, go to 4, verse 3, because they're connected. Something happens at verse 3 that results in something happening in 4, which fulfills what is stated in 5. What happened in 3? In verse 3. Even the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had purged our sins. That's, that's more that. Finish it. Don't change the subject. Say that down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And then we'll now four. Read four. Being made so, so when was he made better made, than the angels? When did he become better than the angels in position? When? When did God make him better than the angels? I'm 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 looking at I, I want to say the res after the resurrection. Give me the text. You're, you're you're having the text and you're inserting words from other passages. You you got to read context, sister. You're not gonna get far in refuting people because you got to learn context. What in that context explains how Jesus became better than the angels? It's right there. Rain tree got it. Being Moses they got it. Say it again. Being made so much better than the angels. How did he, he how and when did he become, heretics. how and when did he become better than the angels? I'm going to give you one more minute to think about it. Then I might have to feed you. Because see this again, share what you're learning is. All these years we're wasting on not learning the depth of scripture. 
We got to learn the depth of scripture, mm. right? No, this this is good for me. This is good yes. for me because I never thought of this. Exactly, honestly. Elijah. Elijah got it. Many people got it. It's right there in verse 3. It's when, when he sat at the right hand of the majesty on high. Don't you make the connection? Oh, okay. It's right there. What I want to do is to illustrate this, to teach you and everyone else, why we need to know the Bible, understand the Bible, and have no doubt about its being the preserved word of God. Living it out and proclaiming mm -hmm. it. I was just watching a discussion where one Christian said, there's like, he said about 93% of Christians are biblically illiterate around that figure. 93%. And he's right. And now here, and it's, this is, again, don't take this as put anyone down. I'm not. I'm trying to encourage you. I, I, I'm quite opposite. We got people who are in ministry apologetics and do not know how to read context or understand how verses relate to one another. Because verse 4 mm -hmm. follows off 3. Something happened in 3 that resulted in Jesus becoming better than the angels. What mm -hmm. happened in verse 3 that resulted in Jesus becoming better than the angels? What was it? When what? he sat down at the right hand. You of got it. So when he sat down, he now sits in throne as the king of creation. So now he becomes better than the angels in position because when he was on earth, he was in the form of a slave who died a shameless death. Well, can I ask this question? Sure. Um, because I, I do believe that Jesus always existed, pre-existence and all of that. What does that so got to do with he Hebrews always, 1? What does that got to do with Hebrews 1? No, no, no. I was just asking, um, uh, just asking the question that... Wasn't he always better than the angels from the beginning? So is that you saying Hebrews one doesn't know what it's talking about? No, and I'm not. I'm not challenging. No, I'm answering your question just, by asking you a question to go deeper. Understand? This is how it's done. I'm asking you. See, begin again, sister. Spend less time debating black Hebrew Israelites, more time going into the depth of Scripture to know what the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you mean that Jesus is always better than the angels? In what sense is he better than? Them? Well, I mean, that, that he's, I mean, because Jesus is God, I okay. mean. So you're saying you know, as God, the creator, he's infinitely better than them, right? Right? As the creator, God, I, yeah, he's better he's than always, the angels, right? Yeah, he's always, he's been okay. glorious from so the beginning. So why, why do you assume that Hebrews 1, 4 is talking about that he became better than them in essence, as opposed to saying he became better than them in rank? What does rank have to do with essence? Nothing, nothing at all. But I'm just saying, I was just wondering, he's always you're, been Sherry, you know, glorious sister, from the beginning. Sherry, sister, I'm mm -hmm. answering your question, but you're not listening. So we're going to do this again. Okay. What does okay. Hebrews 1 4 have to do with Jesus becoming better than the angels? What has that got to do with his essence as God? It's talking about position. When you say he's glorious, so you mean you don't believe the Bible that he, be, when he came to earth? He hid his glory and had no glory and status, but was a slave. What glory are you talking about on earth? You mean he had the glory that he had in heaven with the father when he was on? Um, so my question, my question was posed before he, you know, took on the form of man. Sherry, what's so that I'm got just... to do with Hebrews 1, 4 when it's talking about after he became man and he died? Why are you going back to pre-creation? No, I, I no, it wasn't. It was. I mean, it was just a simple question. Okay. Just to keep to the just, chapter. You know, Ch keep to this. See, I want to be a very harsh taskmaster with you. Why are you bringing okay. irrelevant questions when we're dealing with the exegesis of Hebrews one? Uh, well, I, I well, I figured that it was pertaining to the subject. I mean, I, I didn't mean any harm. No, I no, was no, just sure. asking. Sorry, sister. I think you know what, sister. I'm gonna have to give you some more time to come back to me because you're too sensitive and defensive. And you're not going to let this <laughs> All right, let's try this again. No. Oh, wait, listen to me. Okay. Calm down, breathe. Paul said you women need to shut up. No, I'm just kidding. He didn't say that. Okay, listen to me. Okay. What does Jesus' pre-human glory have to do with Hebrews 1 when it's not talking about Jesus' pre-human glory? It's talking about when he was on earth, he purged our sins, and then after that, he went to heaven sat on God's right hand, and when he sat on God's right hand, he became higher than the angels. Why are you bringing his pre-human glory when it has nothing to do with what it means in Hebrews 1-4 about Jesus being better than the angels? Can we deal with what it means in that context and not bring foreign 
alien issues into our discussion. You okay. Want, you want me okay. there? I'll just speak. I will just ask the question, but okay. Yeah, so, to stick to, okay. So I, is Jesus I equal saying, to the Father? To is the Jesus scripture. equal to the Father? I'm sorry, say that again. Is Jesus equal to the Father? Is Jesus equal to the Father? Mm -hmm. Yes. But then Jesus said in John 14, 28, the Father is greater than I. You see your problem? Because you confuse nature and position. So how can the Father be greater than Jesus in John 14, 28, if he's equal to the Father? I believe that they're co-equal, not, uh, I mean, Jesus isn't above the Father, but I believe that they're co-equal. No one said above. Jesus said the Father is greater than me. So I don't know why you said above. Uh, who brought up above? He said the Father is greater than me, John 14, 28. Right, but I, I believe, in, regarding the Trinity, I believe they're three distinct persons, co-equal, share the same substance, mm -hmm. share the same will, and etc. Uh, yeah, you can I, believe whatever what you believe. want. You didn't uh, answer John 14, 28. Good for you that you believe that. John 14, 28, the Father is greater than me. You're giving, you're preaching. I don't want to hear preaching. I don't want, what does John 14, 28 mean? He says, the Father is greater John than I am. Well, I believe when Jesus took on the form of flesh, mm -hmm. because in Jeremiah 32, 27, it yes. says that God, God flesh, is right? God of all flesh. Okay. So, so that's why the Father is greater than him? the form of flesh. Is that sorry. why the Father is greater than him? Because he took on flesh? Is that what you're saying? I mean, it could be one of the reasons. Okay. I believe it's Well, give me a reason, reasons. man. Just give me one. I'll take one. I believe. I believe that's one of the major reasons, yes. So, but Jesus is flesh in heaven? Is he flesh in heaven? Does he still have that flesh? Yes, he does. So is the Father still greater than him? Yes. So in what way is he equal to the Father? Nature, essence, and authority, they share the same will. So authority, then how can he be greater than him if he's equal in every way? Like nature, essence, and authority. And you'll see where I'm going with this in a minute. I'm just helping you go deeper. Just be patient. Don't panic. Don't worry. The Lord's with you. So so if he's equal to him in authority, then what way can he be greater? You see, these are the things you need to be thinking about, right? In other words, what you're learning now, Sherry, enough debating Hebrew Israelites and get into the meat of Scripture and learn your faith. Now, mm -hmm. now, let me explain it to you. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Let me walk you through this. Don't be dejected. Take this as the Lord sharpening you. Iron sharpens iron. And this is a reality check. We got too many apologists who are spending too much time fighting and debating. Not enough time studying the word to learn the word, to know the word, to know God as he is. So, mm -hmm. that's, what so that's what I want you to do. And now you're going to have to rethink your approach. Because if you get too caught up in debating, 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 then your studies mm -hmm. won't be focused on learning who God is, growing in your knowledge of God, falling more in love with him. It's you're just going to be studying to refute, studying to refute, studying to debate, studying. That's not the purpose of Bible study. That's not why I study mm -hmm. the Bible, right? Okay, okay now, let me, now let me walk you through this because now I'm going to walk you through this. This is what I want to do. Okay. Jesus on earth took the status of a slave. That's position. By becoming a slave on earth, he became less <coughs> in position to the angels and the Father. Even the angels were higher than him in position because he had come to the earth as a slave. And you know the passage, Philippians 2 verse 7, who then took on the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and found in human appearance, right? Uh -huh. Okay, so on earth, did he have the status of a king or a status of a slave? Status of a slave. But the angels were still exalted, right, in heaven and glorious and luminescent. Jesus was none of that. He had veiled it, and his status was that of a slave because he became like us in our fallen state, with the exception of sin. So uh -huh. while he's on earth, the angels are greater than him in status. But then after he dies, he ascends to heaven. And does he now assume the throne? I'm is he sorry, on the throne? Again. Now after he died and he resurrected, is he on the throne? 
at the right hand of power. So yes. he's on the throne, right? Yes. And the throne means that now you are exalted above all creation because if you're on God's throne, that means now you are higher in, in authority and position and sovereignty over all creation. So that's what Hebrews 1 and 4 is saying. It's saying Jesus went from the status of a slave to the right hand of God, and when he ascended to the right hand of God, he then became higher to the angels in position. It has nothing to do with nature. As God, he was always superior in nature, in nature to the angels. But in position, he made himself less than them out of his love for us. Mm -hmm. You with me there now? Yes, sir. Okay, now let me give you a human analogy that's bad. But imagine... You are the president of a company and you hire your father. You are now greater than your father. In what way? At work, you're his boss, right? Right. And you're greater than him in authority at work, right? Yes. But when you go home, you think you're greater than him in position or you're back to reality. No. He's my daddy and you can whoop me with the belt. Correct. So that's my point. You need to now distinguish Position, authority, and nature. I can be equal to you in nature, and you still be better than me in position. Mm -hmm. So when it says Jesus became better than the angels, it means the status he had was less than theirs. And now his status is better than theirs because he's higher than them because he's on the throne again. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes, sir. But now let me further add to it. But there's something new. Before he came to the earth, he didn't have a flesh body. He wasn't human. As God, he's spirit. Now when he went back, he went back slightly differently. Now when he goes to the throne, he sits on a throne with something he didn't have before he left it. Because he left the throne to come to the earth. He went back to the throne. But now when he went back to the throne, he went back there with a human nature and a physical body. So now he went to the throne in a different manner. He now went there not simply as God, but God in a human body, God as a man with a physical body. So he's now on the throne as the God man. Mm. I can hear back noise, background noise. Oh, I'm sorry. That's my fan. Sorry, because it's hot here in Chicago. All right, man. Don't be so hot, girlfriend. What you talking about? I'm an AZ, man. You talking about hot. What it is? All right. Are you with me there? Okay. I'll turn it down. So now that I we now that I walked you through this, now you understand what it means that he became better than the angels. Yes, sir. In what way is he now better than them? Um, hold on, let me get it down because I have pulled it down in my my notes. Um, he is better than them in position. You got it, because when he was on earth, he had the position of a slave, right? Yes, sir. And so they were higher than him in position. You can call me yes, brother. Don't say, sir. You're making me feel older than you. Come on. Now, don't do that to me. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm just, I'm okay. Just, I'm just, it's just a form of respect. Just call me brother, <laughs> man. Okay. I ain't that old. I ain't going to be your daddy. All right. But follow with me. So now let's follow the argument because now I'm going to regroup. Hebrews 1.3 says, he sat at the right hand of the father. When he did, he became better than the angels in rank. Because that was the day he sat on the throne as the God-man. And that's the day God said to him, you are my son, today I've begotten you. Because it's talking about Jesus being enthroned after his resurrection and ascension, fulfilling Psalm 2-7, after he went to heaven and sat on the throne. That was the day that God says, my son, today I've begotten you. Because now you sit on the throne as the heir of David, fulfilling the promises of David. So in Hebrews 1.5, when, when God says to Jesus, you are my son, today I've begotten you. Today I've begotten you refers to what day again in the context of Hebrews 1? Oh, let me say, say that again. In Hebrews 1.5, when it says, "For which, to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I've begotten you? That day where God says, I've begotten you today, in the context of Hebrews 1, what day is that in Hebrews 1? The answer is in 3. When did God beget him to be a son in that sense? You got it, Moses. Moses got it. You, we just went through it. When? Because Psalm 2-7 is about the king taking the throne, right? Remember we read that? Psalm 2-6-7. 
I have set my king in Zion on my holy hill, and I will declare the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son, today I have begotten you. So you are my son, today I have begotten you. Today means the day that you sit on the throne as king is the day wow. that I have begotten you, right? The right hand of majesty, yes, You sir. got it. So what was the day when God the Father said to Jesus, Jesus, you are my son, today I have begotten you. What day was that, according to Hebrews 1? Um... Hebrews one, uh, one and three. So what day was that? Uh, uh, he sat down at the right hand of majesty. Now say it to me. I'm a Hebrews right. Explain it to me. Okay, sister. What day is it, sister, that God said you are my son today I've begotten you? What was that day? Because you read it. Explain uh, it. Yes, the day that he said this... Uh, the day that he sat down at the right hand of majesty. Meaning when he went to heaven, right? Yeah, after the this was after the resurrection you got and it. all of that. So Jesus was begotten on the day he entered heaven after his resurrection. Okay. You got it now? Yes, sir. But then notice what's the argument? Did that mean Jesus didn't exist before he was begotten to sit on the throne in heaven? Wasn't he already existing on earth before he went to heaven to be begotten? Yes. So that again proves you can beget someone that already exists. Okay. okay. You got it now? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got it. Okay. So again, okay. I just showed you someone that was begotten who was already alive, already existing before he was begotten. That's my point. Amen. Okay, but I'm going to give you more examples. These are less harder. That was kind of hard. The reason why it's hard, sister, you're not doing it. Don't feel bad because it's hard for all of us. We're learning. We're all babes. We didn't no, come that's, up. that's okay. I'm, I'm, I got thick skin. So. Good, praise <laughs> the Lord. But now, I won't give yourself that simple now where you can show them, hey, someone can be born and already alive before he was born. I'll give you an example even from us. Weren't you alive in your mommy's belly before she gave birth to you? Yes, sir. So you were born, but you existed prior to your birth because you were existing in your mommy's belly. You got my point? Yes, I do. But now let me give you from the Bible. Go to 1 John 5, verse 1. 1 John 5, verse 1. 1 John 5, verse 1. Five. So you, you, you're a godsend, Sherry. You know why? You know why huh? you're godsend today? You know why you're godsend today? Uh, uh, why? Because so many people are being blown away and blessed with this information. Because your question now gave me an opportunity to bless all of you. And they're like, wow. So see what a blessing you are, your questions? So Lord Jesus bless you. But in 1 John 5 verse 1, the letter of John, 1 John chapter 5 verse 1. And it says, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Can I ask you a question? Every before you yes. were Before you believed in Jesus and were born of God, were you already alive? Yes. So here it says, those believing in Jesus Christ have been born of God. But does that mean they didn't exist before they were born of God? No, no, no. They, they existed. Oh, so um, here's another example of people being born who are already alive. People already alive being born. Right? Okay. Yes, sir. Now let me give you, go to John 1, 12 to 13. John 1, okay, John. 12 to 13. John 1. Verses 12 to 13. 12 to 13. 13. Okay. And it says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to, them, even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13. Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Wait, so believers who believe in Jesus were born of God. Were they already alive before they were born of God? Yes. So they were already alive before they were born of God. So who told you, Christians, did you hear? Who told you that if you're begotten, that means you came into being. You didn't exist before you were begotten. Who told you that? Where did you get that from? It's not the Bible. So who said that if Jesus is the only begotten son... That means he was begotten at some point in time and didn't exist before that. Where'd you get this? It's not biblical logic. 
You see my point? You guys are allowing the heretics, you're allowing the anti-Trinitarians, you're allowing the enemies of the true God and the gospel to define terms in a manner contrary to the Bible. Why letting them get away with it? Well, not for, not you. I'm speaking not generally. Sherry, it's not only you. Remember, Sherry, I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to the group here. So don't think it's always directed to you. So I just want you to be oh, okay. okay. Now, let me give you example, okay. other examples of people who are already alive before they had life in themselves. They're already alive before they had life in, life in themselves. Here, go to John 6, 53. Let me prove it to you. John 6, 53. All right. And it says here, then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Can I ask you something, sister? Yes, sir. He said, you got to come to faith and eat my flesh, drink my blood to have life in you. Weren't they already alive and conscious and were hearing Jesus speak? Yes, they were. But wait, he said. You got to eat my flesh, drink my blood to have life in you. Meaning that when he said that, they didn't have life in themselves. So how were they alive and conscious and couldn't understand what he was saying? You see the point? Yeah, Even they, here, you have people, alive, right? But they're not alive. You have people who are alive even though they don't have life in themselves. So even receiving life in yourself doesn't mean you don't exist before that act. Mm. Micah, yeah, of course it's spiritual death. But Micah, that make, makes my point, Micah Grace. People are spiritually dead, but they're still alive and conscious. That's the point. This language doesn't mean being brought into existence from non-existence, that you're being begotten from prior non-existence. No, you have people who are, who are already alive who are begotten, who are born, and yet they're already alive. That's my point. Everyone got it now? Mm -hmm. So now that's how you answer John 3, 16. And this is now record, recorded and archived. So that means you don't have to take notes and forget, even though you can take notes if you want. Go back, re-listen until it becomes second nature. Okay. So well, well, it's, it's a habit. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. No, this, I'm not saying you don't do it. Even if you do it, you can still go back and listen because it's recorded now. Okay. Right? Now, if you have another question you want me to answer, go ahead. I'll give you one more question. Or is this, do you need time to simmer on this? No, that, that, just, it was just those, um, those two, um, those, those, uh, uh, those two questions, like what be gotten, what you just answered. No. And then oh, yeah. of course with the Gentiles, what you just answered as well. Um, and, and of course, um, you know, uh, oh, the the last one, world um, that uh, God to love the world. Yeah. So um, they believe that salvation again is only for Israel. Now I know you, I answered that in part. Okay. Now they like to take that word world, yeah, and use it, uh, fuse it with Isaiah forty five verse five, world without end. I believe okay. that's the verse. Or right, what about it? Um. So they try to say that that world again is um, in John three sixteen the world of Israel, and then they say in Isaiah of uh, forty five verse five, I believe, world without end. They try to use that also in reference to just Israel as well. Okay, I, I don't even know how to form a question. All right, well, that, here let me let me repeat that. To me. Number one, in the context of John, before you go to Isaiah, I say, okay, in the context of John, the word cosmos, world, mm -hmm. in John's context, does that refer to the nation of Israel or Jews and Gentiles alike? I just showed you in John 1, 3, and 10, it has to be Jews and Gentiles alike. But now let me use Isaiah against them. Are you ready? Yes. If you go to Isaiah 49, verses 5 to 6. Isaiah, Isaiah 49, 40. verses 5 to 6. 5 to 6. Okay. And it says, and now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him through Israel being not uh, be not gathered. Yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord and my God shall be my strength. Mm -hmm. Verse six. 
And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest or shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore uh, to restore the preserve now before of you move Israel. on notice what he's saying it's this is you're bigger than simply saving Israel right that's too small for you you're meant for bigger mm -hmm. things you're not just going to gather Jacob and the preserve of Israel what else are you going to do you're going to go beyond that and save the world well, we'll read it it's not, you're going to do more than that. So it's right there, last part. What does it say? I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Now, if you still have to prove to them Gentiles here cannot be Israel, then don't waste your time. Because here it's distinguishing. You're going to be more than Israel's Savior. You're going to be more than that because you're meant for bigger things. Not only will you save Israel, but you're going to bring my salvation to the Gentiles, to the ends of the earth. How much clearer mm. could Isaiah be that the nations here, the Gentiles, cannot be the Israelites? I'm sorry, say that again. How much sorry, clearer right. could Isaiah be that the Gentiles here cannot be the Israelites? It, that's very clear because it's a distinction right here where exactly. it says, and to restore the preserve of Israel. That means, he goes no, in. Finish it though. No, it says, you're, this is too small a thing for you. You're meant for bigger things. To save Israel, that's small stuff. You're going to do more than that. How much more? You're going to bring salvation to the ends of the earth, a light to the Gentiles. So obviously, the Gentiles, ends of the earth, cannot be the same as the Israelites. And if they still tell you it's Israelites, walk on, don't waste your time. You're wasting your time now. Okay. Okay. Isaiah 49 verses 5 to 6. Someone's asked me where. Isaiah 49 verses 5 to 6. Don't waste your time anymore. Say, okay, you know what? I'm wasting time here. Because if it's about ego, then you keep debating. And then you dishonor the Lord because in Matthew 7 verse 6, the Lord says, Do not give what is sacred to dogs or cast pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot. So Jesus is saying, discernment, judgment call. Is this man going to dishonor the word, twist the word, butcher the word? Then I'm going to ignore him. The only time I'll put him in his place is when he's deceiving other people. If he's now misleading other people, that's when I stand up and put him in his place and show that he's a fool and an idiot for the sake of the others. But if it's just you and them engaging, why waste your time? Move on. Because then you're doing it for ego. What Now you see what I do, right? I'll bring them on on my live stream. Once I see they're a joke, I hang up and block them because it's not an ego trip. I'm not trying to hear when an argument humiliates someone. I want to be used of God to teach someone to come to faith. But if they're going to be blasphemers, I'll put them in their place, humiliate them, and send them on their merry way and have nothing to do with them. Amen. Neither, neither should you. Right? Amen. Yes, sir. So I hope you learned. I hope that blessed you, sister. Yes, you did. Thank you so, so much. And Make I want sure. You to, um, uh, Make sure anytime you have questions, contact me via Skype because then I'll go a live stream so I can answer for the benefit of others. Because I don't want to just answer for one. I want to answer for many. And your questions are excellent because everyone got blessed. So contact me, all right? I sure will. God bless you, Brother Sam. Okay, let me, let me, let me end it with a song for you. It should have been the Owen Howe. Made you oh, share it. Our love holds on, holds on. Our chair. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Lord be with you, sister. Take care. <laughs> All right. Uh, here are the links to the articles. Are you ready? You want an articles where I show beginning doesn't mean coming into existence from nothing. Here's article one. It's a three-part refutation to a Muslim. Three-part refutation to Muslim. So read all three parts. Here's part one. I still got to answer the question of the name. So part one. Here's part two. And part two, I deal with the begetting. Part two, I deal with the begetting. I'm going to have to add some more verses. That's part two. Okay. And here's part three. Part three. Here's part three. Okay. So please save them, study them, print them out, upload them. Guys, you learned something again today. Do you see how vitally important it is to learn how to interpret the Bible, study the Bible, interpret context? And you see how important it is to study the Bible, 
to get to know God, to get to know the God of the Bible, to understand his word so you can know him, so you can love him more and live for him more perfectly. And Bible study shouldn't be just to study to refute, study to defend. That's not the purpose of Bible study. No, I never sang in the choir, never. You understand now? Did you learn? Everyone learn? And with that said, how many of you saw, and by the way, I've done sessions on this. Why do I say go back and listen to the previous sessions I've done for the past two years? I have sessions explaining this. This wasn't something new. I've already explained it. But how many of you saw now that the Bible uses terms such as beget, being born, without implying that the person who was born didn't exist before his birth? Did you learn that now and you saw irrefutable proof? Did you see it? Now, how many of you are blessed now and can be at peace calling Jesus the only begotten son? Because only begotten son doesn't mean he was brought into being. Doesn't mean he was created. He is the only begotten son, but he's existed eternally. He has no beginning. Ain't that a blessing? Amen. He is the only begotten son. But he never came into being. He never came into existence. Okay. Are we ready for the final question? Unless someone calls me and interrupts. Hopefully not, because I want to answer this question. Are we ready for the final question? Is the name Jehovah the name of the Father? Or is it the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit? Is the name Jehovah the name of the Father? Or is it the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit as well? Are all three persons called Jehovah? Are we ready for the answer? Are all three persons called Jehovah? Now, let me very, well, okay. We're going to have to use the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Is it okay? Use the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Okay. Are we ready? Because I'm going to answer the question. Before we use the Jehovah's Witness Bible, okay, before we use the Jehovah's Witness Bible, Protestant, before we do that, number one, it needs to be kept in mind. Keep this in mind. Please keep this in mind. You can have more than one person or being that possesses the same name. You can have more than one person or being that possesses the same name. A name can belong to more than one person or one being. You with me there? Does it, are you clear on that? Let me repeat it again. You can have more than one person, more than one being that has the same name. A name can belong to more than one person, more than one being. Now, I'm going to show you in the King James Bible because this is what the Hebrew reads. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Before you quote Genesis 5, 2, let me go get something to drink because I need to drink something. It's going to be Genesis 5, verse 2, but we're going to read verses 1 and 2. But don't, don't quote it yet. And I'm going to sing Sherry for you. <clears throat> it should have been God, knowing how I made you feel. It should have been God. After all, the world to see me, the name of 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 the now I know you lied, you stay. All right. <clears throat> Micah, what's wrong with me, Micah? Rain Tree, good to have you, brother. I don't know if you're a brother or sister. Thank you, Rain Tree. He just said that voice is scientifically proof of God. Thank you, brother. By the way, Rain Tree, are you a brother or a sister? Brother or sister. I never knew if you're a brother or sister. Just curious. Just want you before we move on. It's Coke Zero, by the way. The reason why I'm asking is, isn't it beautiful, Rain Tree, when you can get beyond my issues? Okay, now, brother, Rain Tree, isn't it beautiful when you can't get beyond my issues and see that I'm not this nasty guy at all, but I have to be tough and I have to put people in their place who come and attack and mock and blaspheme and distract, <clears throat> that when you can get over that, and put up with me for the sake of Jesus, how much you're going to learn for the glory of Jesus. So good to have you, brother. I'm glad you stuck around and didn't let 
my issues push you away because I want more people to come to learn and become soldiers in love with Jesus, sold out for the glory of Christ. Okay, now that said, let's go to Genesis 5, verses 1 to 2. Genesis 5, verses 1 to 2. Yeah, Juliana Jindu is getting upset, man. Prophet Google, Khalil Abuk. If you're a Syrian, why don't you at least identify yourself? Okay, read with me. Read with me, guys, in the King James. Genesis 5, verses 1 to 2. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Post verse 2 again. Don't call me yet. Let me finish this answer. Don't call me yet. Let me finish this answer. Okay. <clears throat> Genesis 5 verse 2. Magnificent prophet, stop your hate. Coke Zero, I lost 100 pounds and I'm still losing more weight. Stop it, hater. Don't tell me what to do with my life. Anyway, Genesis 5 verse 2. One more time. What a stinking hater. They're going to lose weight drinking Coke Zero. You're a zero, get with the hero. You're a zero, get with the hero. All right, Genesis 5 verse 2. Guys, read. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Male and female, their name was Adam. Did you catch it? So wait, guys, help me understand this. Trinitarians? Be like, what talk? Yeah. Trinitarians. I thought Eve was married with Adam. I mean, married to Adam with Adam. Eve is married to Adam, and yet she's Adam. Wait, so at the beginning of creation, guys, pay attention. Thank you, Victor. God bless you, brother. Hope you're feeling better in Jesus' name. By the blood of Jesus, you are whole. We're all whole, and my daughters are whole in Jesus' name. Okay, now follow with me. Before you call me, Victor, I'll give you my number, but just let me finish this, guys. Let me finish this. Okay. Eve is called Adam, and her husband is called Adam. That's Genesis 5, 2. He called them, their name, Adam. Now watch this. Follow with me. At the beginning of creation, there was Eve. And Eve was with Adam, and Eve was Adam. <whistles> At the beginning of creation, there was Eve. And Eve was with Adam, and Eve was Adam. And that's all true. Just like in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. So you can have the word being with God and being God also, like Eve can be with Adam and be Adam also. Wow. What do you make? What do you make, man? I'm making beauties. Right? At the beginning of creation was Eve, and Eve was with Adam, and Eve was Adam. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word was with God and was God. Eve was with Adam, and she was Adam. My goodness, what are you makers? <laughs> now, let me show you that the Father is Jehovah. We're going to now switch to the Jehovah Witness translation. We're going to switch to the Jehovah Witness translation, right? Let's go to Mark 12. 35 to 37. More proofs, brother. Exactly, Garrett. I want to kiss your head, Garrett. If you're a guy, kiss your head. But it's COVID-19, so let's do it long distance. Jacob, Israel, a person called Israel, and the name. Oh, you know what? You gave me a brilliant idea. Hold on, man. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, you know what? You just gave me a brilliant idea, dude. Okay? You just gave me a brilliant idea. Thank you, Garrett. Garrett just gave me a brilliant idea. Okay. Let's go to Isaiah 49, verses 1 to 3. Jehovah Witness Bible. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you, brother, so much. I want to kiss your head. Right? Hopefully it's not sweaty. Isaiah 49, verses 1 to 3. Isaiah 49, verses 1 to 3. Michelle, I drink Coke Zero. Michelle, get rid of the zero and get with the hero. All right? All right. Now, Isaiah 49, verses 1 to 3. Read with me, guys. Please read with me. I want you to read now. 
Listen to me, you islands, and pay attention, you faraway nations. Jehovah has called me before I was born. From the time I was in my mother's womb, he has made mention of my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. He has hidden me in the shadow of his hand. He made me a polished arrow. He concealed me in his quiver. Now notice verse 3. Thank you, V. Elijah. Verse 3. God bless you. He said to me, you are my servant, O Israel, through whom I will show my splendor. One more time. Verse 3. Pay attention to verse 3. This servant, his name is Israel. Okay. He said to me, you are my servant, O Israel, through whom I will show my splendor. Notice, so the servant is saying, he named me Israel. So now let's read 4 and 5, verses 4 and 5. Isaiah 49, 3 with verses 4 and 5. So the servant's name is Israel. He named me Israel. That's the servant. Now watch verses 4 and 5. Watch here. But I said, the servant said, I have toiled for nothing. I used up my strength. For in reality, in vain, but surely my judgment is with Jehovah and my wages with my God. And now Jehovah, the one who formed me from the womb as a servant, has set for me to bring Jacob back to him so that Israel may be gathered to him. Wait, wait. I thought he is Israel. He said he formed me in the womb to be a servant, and he called me Israel. And then he's sending me to gather Israel back to him. I'll be glorified in the sight of my God. So wait, the servant is Israel, and he will gather Israel? So Israel gathers Israel. You got it? So here you have the servant who's Israel and the nation who's Israel. So Israel gathers Israel. So here again you have two who bear the same name. Right? Now where is the father called? Jehovah. Mark 12, 35 to 37. Mark 12, 35 to 37. Mark 12, 35 to 37. Jesus speaking. However, as Jesus continued teaching in the temple, he said, How is it that the scribes say that the Christ is David's son? Christ, he's talking about Christ. By the Holy Spirit, David himself said, Jehovah said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies beneath your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How can he, it be that he is his son? Jehovah said to my Lord, David speaking, Jehovah said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. David himself calls him Lord. So how can it be that he is his son? And the large crowd was listening to him with pleasure. Guys, it says Jehovah said to David's Lord. David's Lord is the Christ. So Jehovah speaking to Jesus. Jehovah saying to Jesus, who's David's Lord, because Jesus is Messiah, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Who is Jehovah here that's speaking to Jesus Christ? Who is Jehovah who's telling Jesus Christ, sit at my right hand? Who is Jehovah here? Who's the one called Jehovah here? The Father. So we've proven the Father's Jehovah. So the Father's Jehovah, right? Thank you, Brenda. God bless you. Is the Spirit called Jehovah? Is the Spirit called Jehovah? Are we ready? Okay. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 to 18. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 to 18. Jehovah Witness Bible. By inserting the word Jehovah, they help me make my case. Okay, 2 Corinthians 3, 17, 18. Watch here. Now Jehovah is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of Jehovah is, there is freedom. So the Spirit of Jehovah is Jehovah. Jehovah is the Spirit, and that Spirit belongs to Jehovah. And all of us, while we with unveiled faces reflect like mirrors, the glory of Jehovah are transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, exactly as it is done by Jehovah the Spirit. Man! Jehovah the Spirit is the Spirit of Jehovah. Jehovah. 
That's the Jehovah Witness Bible. When you get a chance, do me a favor, guys. Write down 2 Corinthians 3, 7 to 18, and Exodus chapter 34. Please do me this favor. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 7 to 18. 2 Corinthians 3, 7 to 18, okay? And Exodus 34. Do you know why? Because now let's look at the context of Exodus 3. Are we ready from the Jehovah Witness Bible? Are we ready to unpack this? Or are you guys bored? Are you tired, sleeping, saying, oh, man, this guy's boring? Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Let's break it down. Do me a favor, Protestant. Let's break it down into two sections. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 7 to 11. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 7 to 11. Thank you, Catholic. I love you, man. My brother. Okay, let's hear. Garrett, yep, the angel of the Lord is Jesus. Now, guys, read with me, guys. Please read. Job Witness Bible. Now, if the code that administers death, meaning the law of Moses, that was engraved in letters on stones, came with such glory that the Son of Israel could not gaze at the face of Moses. Notice he's referring to Exodus 34. Guys, if you're not reading, paying attention, you're not going to get this. Paul is saying, do you remember in Exodus 34 when Moses went up to the mountain and saw Jehovah to receive the commands? When he came down, he was shining with the light of Jehovah. He started reflecting the light of Jehovah, so his face was shining. The Israelites couldn't look at it, so Moses had to put a veil. He had to cover. This is all Exodus 34. Okay, pay attention now. Israel could not gaze at the face of Moses because of the glory of his face, a glory that was to be done away with. Why should the administering of the Spirit not be with even greater glory? I'll explain this in a minute, but just read with me. Okay? For if the code, meaning the law of Moses, administering condemnation was glorious, it came with such glory, how much more glorious would be the administration of righteousness, the administering of righteousness? How much more glorious the new covenant of Jesus? How much more glorious is Jesus' new covenant? If the old covenant faded and brought death, came with glory, how much more Jesus' new covenant that brings everlasting life? You see, he's arguing from the lesser to the greater. Okay, now watch here. In fact, even what had once been made glorious has been stripped of glory because of the glory that excels it. The new covenant makes the old covenant pale, look pale in comparison. For if what was to be done away with was brought in with glory, how much greater... How much great would be the glory of what remains? Now, did everyone understand Paul's argument? This tells you how brilliant Paul was, filled with such wisdom and knowledge of the Spirit. He was a genius. The Spirit inspired him to be such a genius to make these connections. So let me explain his point. You want meat, right? Let me give you meat. Let me explain his point. He's saying the law of Moses that is now going to be supplanted by the new covenant of Jesus came with such glory that God came down in a cloud on a mount and Moses went up to the mount and got those commands and because he was in the presence of God, he started radiating the glory of God. So when he came down and Israel saw the light from his face, they couldn't look at it and Moses veiled himself. So what's Paul's point? Paul's point is this. If that law that brought death, not salvation, came with such glory. Can you imagine how much glorious is Jesus' new covenant, which is superior to Moses and his law? You see what he's trying to say here? Are you with me there? You understand his argument? Thank you, friends. I hope I look better. Okay. And then Exodus 34 makes you read it, because when he went to the mountain... It says Jehovah came. He saw Jehovah visibly, saw the form of Jehovah and spoke to Jehovah. It says Jehovah, not a creature. So who was the being that appeared on the mountain and gave the loss to Moses? Jehovah. Whose light started radiating from the face of Moses? The light of Jehovah. Whose light caused Moses to veil himself because Israel could not look at the light? Jehovah. Don't forget. Jehovah. 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 All right. Now let's read 12 to 16. Let's read. 
2 Corinthians 12, uh, 3, 12 to 16. Pay attention. 2 Corinthians 3, verses 12 to 16. Pay attention. Since we have such a hope, we are using great freeness of speech and not doing what Moses did when he would put a veil over his face so that the sons of Israel might not gaze intently at the end of what has to be done away with. Now watch this. Watch this. Okay. But their minds were dull. For to this present day, it's not about the Jews, to this present day, the same veil remains. It's now a spiritual veil that does not allow them to see. Unlifted when the old covenant is read, because it is taken away only by means of Christ. So that veil that blinds them from seeing what the Old Testament points to can all be removed in who? Who removes it? Christ. Don't forget, <clears throat> Christ. You got it? Verse 14. Only Christ, when you come to him, removes the veil, like he removed it for Paul, and now Paul can see. Okay. In fact, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies upon their hearts. But when one turns to Jehovah, the veil is taken away. Wow. Did you catch it? Let's post 2 Corinthians 3, 14 and 16 together. Watch here, guys. Watch how the Jehovah's Witnesses just buried themselves. Do you want to see how they buried themselves by putting the word Jehovah? Watch. Watch what they just did. But their minds were dulled for this present day. The same veil re remains unlifted when the Old Covenant is read because it is taken away by only by means of Christ. So they got to turn to Christ to have the veil removed. But in 16 it says... It's only when you turn to Jehovah that the veil is taken away. Folks, the Jews all believed in Jehovah, but the veil was still there. So who is the Jehovah that they have to turn to for the veil to be removed? Jesus. Because the Jews already were believing in Jehovah. So they thought. But here it says they have to turn to Jehovah for the veil to be removed. And that's Christ who removes it. You see what they did by inserting the word Jehovah? They end up identifying Jesus as Jehovah. Because who removes the veil? Jehovah. Paul, but they already believe in Jehovah. No, 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 no. They think they do. The Jehovah they have to turn to is Christ. Christ is the Jehovah that they need to turn to to remove the veil. Did you get it? Don't do L-M-A-O. It's L-M-B-O. Laugh my butt off. No A's here, buddy. So who is Jehovah here in verses 14, 16? The one who removes the veil. Who's the one who removes the veil? Christ. Stupid Jehovah's Witnesses. Dude, didn't you say, see by inserting the word Jehovah, you made Jesus Jehovah? Because the Jews already believe in Jehovah, so they think. So in their minds, they already turned. So they had to turn to Jesus as Jehovah because that's what they didn't accept. Surprise, Jehovah Witness. You caught it? Okay, but now here's where you're going to see two persons called Jehovah. Are you ready now? Are you now ready? Are you now ready? Now let's read 2 Corinthians 17 to 18. Now watch here. Guys, get blown away. Here's your trinity. Here is your trinity. Son and spirit called Jehovah. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 to 18. Now Jehovah's the spirit. And where the spirit of Jehovah is, there's freedom. Now there's two who are called Jehovah. Jehovah the spirit, and that spirit belongs to Jehovah. So the Holy Spirit is Jehovah too, but he belongs to Jehovah. The Spirit who is Jehovah and the Spirit of Jehovah. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 3.17 again. One more time. Catch it. Ignore the fact they put S in the lowercase and the second occurrence of the word Spirit. Now Jehovah is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of Jehovah is, there is freedom. Wait, Spirit of Jehovah? That means the spirit belongs to Jehovah, yes. But you just said the spirit is Jehovah. Jehovah is the spirit. And that spirit belongs to Jehovah. 
Who is the Jehovah that the Spirit belongs to? You don't need to guess. You were told, Christ. You know what Paul just told you? The Holy Spirit is Jehovah, and he belongs to Jehovah Christ. Christ is Jehovah, and the Spirit is Jehovah, and the Spirit who is Jehovah belongs to Jehovah Christ. Paul just called Christ and the Spirit two. He called them both Jehovah. Second Corinthians three eighteen. Second Corinthians three eighteen. And uh, and all of us, while we with unveiled faces reflect like mirrors the glory of Jehovah, are transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, exactly as it is done by Jehovah the Spirit. So Jehovah's the Spirit. Yes. And the spirit belongs to Jehovah? Yes. So that means there are two. The spirit with Jehovah and Jehovah, like Eve is with Adam and was Adam, and the word was with God and was God. So the spirit is with Jehovah and is Jehovah. Yes. But who is the Jehovah in 2 Corinthians 3? Jesus Christ. So let me paraphrase what Paul said. The spirit belongs to Jehovah Christ, and the spirit himself is Jehovah. Sink it. Now let's go to Jeremiah 31, 33 34. Jeremiah 31, 33 34. Watch here. Amen, right? Brenda, by making the stupid mistake of inserting the word Jehovah in the English, because the Greek doesn't say Jehovah, it says Kyrios, Kurios, Lord. But in the context, the Lord means Jehovah, because he's referring to Exodus 34. So what they did was, instead of translating Lord, they inserted the word Jehovah, because they're right. There, Lord does mean Jehovah. But they failed to see how this proves that Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, two, are called Jehovah. There are two called Jehovah. And then when you add the Father, the Father is Jehovah, Jesus Christ is Jehovah, the Holy Spirit is Jehovah, and only these three, no more, no less. Which song, Michael? I don't know. I don't remember. Only three and three alone. Jeremiah 31, verses 33 to 34. Jeremiah 31, verses 33 to 34. That's, uh, I forgot the name of the band. It's O'Sherry. It's called O'Sherry. Okay, now read with me. Job in this translation, read with me. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares Jehovah. So notice who's speaking. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares Jehovah. I will put my law within them, and in their heart I will write it. And I will become their God, and they'll become my people. So Jehovah's speaking. Now notice 34. And they will no longer teach anyone his neighbor and each one his brother, saying, No, Jehovah, for they will all know me from the least to the greatest of them, declares Jehovah, for I will forgive their error and I will no longer remember their sin. Guys, don't forget this prophecy. Jehovah says, I, Jehovah, declare the day will come. I'll be their God. They'll all know me. I'll make a new covenant with them and I'll remember their sins no more. Declares Jehovah. So who's saying this? Jehovah, right? Jehovah's saying this. You read it, right? In their translation. Okay. Hebrews 10, verses 15 to 17. Follow me. Hebrews 10, verses 15 to 17. Hebrews 10, verses 15 to 17. Remember those words were the words of Jehovah. Jehovah said it. Pay attention. Thank you, Jehovah Witness. Moreover, the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us after it is said. The Holy Spirit said, what did the Holy Spirit say? This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says Jehovah. Wow. They just admitted the Holy Spirit is the Jehovah who said those words. The Holy Spirit is Jehovah. I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds. I will write them. Then it says, the Holy Spirit again says, 
and I will no longer call their sins and their lawless deeds to mind. Jehovah's Witnesses, what did you just do? You just admitted the Holy Spirit is the Jehovah God who told Israel, I'll be your God. It's my covenant. I'll write my laws in your heart, and I won't remember your sins anymore. Wow, Jehovah Witness. Surprise. Surprise. No, Zina, why are you blocking Catholic? Unblock Catholic, Zina. Unblock. Quick. Unblock. My goodness. This guy is one of my most faithful supporters. Audhu billah. Audhu billah, Audhu billah. Paul was right about you women. Yeah, Zina. Zina should sit down and shut up. Paul, you were right. These women, Paul, these women. Ugh, Paul, ugh. No wonder you didn't get married, Paul. Paul, no wonder you got, didn't get married. Uh, okay, it's okay, Zina. We love you. We know you're young and you're a warrior for Christ. That's why even your name is a warrior. You're not like Bratit and Shicha. You're a warrior. She, on the other hand, is, you know, just she's always whining, complaining. Me, 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 me. All right. Everyone, everyone clear? You see what Hebrews 10, 15 to 17 did, says? The Holy Spirit is the Jehovah who spoke Jeremiah 31, verses 33, 34. The Holy Spirit is the Jehovah who said, I will be their God. No longer will they need to teach people who I am. I'll be their God. They'll all know me, declares Jehovah, and I'll remove their sins. So that I've given you now proof from even the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Proof from the Jehovah's Witness Bible. The Father is Jehovah. Jesus Christ is Jehovah. The Holy Spirit is Jehovah. Jehovah is the name of the Father and of his Son and of his eternal spirit. All three and only these three are called Jehovah in the New Testament. Angie, don't let me make an accident and block you, Mod. Okay, everyone with me there? Is that clear? Okay, let me give you a final one. Luke 3, verses 3 to 6. Luke 3, verses 3 to 6. Let's read verses 1 to 6. Let's start at 1. Luke 3, verses 1 to 6. Okay. Read with me. Okay, read with me. Luke 3, verses 1 to 6. Watch here. In the fifth, 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod was district ruler of Galilee. Philip, his brother, was district ruler of the country of, man, how do you say that word? Eturia, Utyria, Eturia, Trachonitis, Lysanias was district ruler of Abilene. Now watch. Read. In the days of the chief priest, Anna, and of Caiaphas, God's decoration came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. John the Baptist, he came to in the wilderness. So he went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching baptism and symbol of repentance for forgiveness of sins. So John the Baptist fulfills what? Just as, is, as it is written, in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of Jehovah, make his roads straight. Now read verse 5 and 6. Every valley must be filled up, every mountain and hill level. The crooked ways must become straight and the rough ways smooth. And all flesh will see the salvation of God. So know who, notice who John the Baptist is. I, John the Baptist, am the voice of Isaiah. Shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way of Jehovah. That's exactly what he says in John 1, 23. John 1, 23. What does he say? John 1, 23. Who does John the Baptist claim to be? John 1, 23. Watch here. He said, this is John the Baptist. No, not Elijah, brother. Sit, brother, you, you're, you need to take a break. Breathe a little bit. Nor did he say he's Elijah. He said he wasn't Elijah. Calm down, buddy. Breathe. 
John 1, 23, he said, John the Baptist said, I am a voice of someone crying out in the wilderness. Make the way of Jehovah straight, just as Isaiah the prophet said. So did John the Baptist agree with Luke, Matthew, Mark? Did John the Baptist himself say, I am the voice of Isaiah 40 in the wilderness saying, make the paths of Jehovah straight. That's me. I'm here to prepare you for the path of Jehovah. I'm here to prepare for Jehovah. But wait, I'm confused. Go to Acts 19, verse 4. Acts 19, verse 4. This is the Jehovah's Witness Bible, and then we're going to call it a night. Acts 19, verse 4. Watch here. Jehovah's Witness Bible. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of civil repentance, telling the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. Okay, I'm confused. John the Baptist said, I am the voice in the wilderness of Isaiah 40. Prepare the way of Jehovah. Jehovah's coming. John, you're preparing for Jehovah's coming, right? Yes. Who is it? Jesus Christ. Wait. Jesus Christ is the Jehovah that you're preparing for? Yes. Jesus Christ is Jehovah, Isaiah 40. So Jesus is called Jehovah by Isaiah Isaiah was talking about Jesus as the Jehovah who is to come. <whistles> Still don't get it? Still don't believe it? John 1, 29 to 33. Jehovah Witness Bible. John 1, 29 to 33, and we're done. You guys got two great sessions because of the Holy Spirit. Refuting Stafford, that he's a demon, where the God of Gregory of Nyssa silenced and shamed him, the God who's triune. And now you got this session. Okay. John 1, 29 to 33. Read with me. Read with me. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and he said, See, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one about whom I said, Behind me. So he sees Jesus. He said, It says, This is him, the Lamb of God. This is the one I said. Behind me, there comes a man who is advanced in front of me, for he existed before me. Even I did not know him, but the reason why I came baptizing in water was that he might be made manifest to Israel. See, he's saying, I came to manifest Jesus to you. Now watch here. Okay. Watch what he says here. God also bore witness saying, I viewed the spirit coming down as a dove out of heaven and it remained upon him. Now watch 33. Watch 33. Even I did not know him. But the very one who sent me, sent me to baptize in water, said to me, whoever it is upon whom you see the Spirit coming down and remaining, this is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. So notice, John is saying, God told me, when that one comes, you're going to know who he is, when the Holy Spirit comes down to him in the shape of a dove. God told me, the one coming You'll know who he is when the Holy Spirit comes down upon him in the shape of a dove, and that's the Lamb of God. So he sees Jesus. He goes, there he is. Now read verse 34. Verse 34. Verse 34. John 1, 34. And I have seen and I have given witness that this one is the Son of God. Okay, guys, help me understand. John said... Jesus, that's the Lamb of God, the Son of God. And God who sent me told me, I'm going to know that it's him when the Holy Spirit comes down upon him in the shape of a dove. So number one, Jesus is not the Father. He's the Son of God, the Father, the Lamb of God, the Father. So God and Jesus are not the same person. Number two, Jesus is not the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit came down upon him in the shape of a dove. Number three, the Holy Spirit is not God. Because God said, when you see the Spirit come down upon him, he didn't say, when you see me come down upon him. So let's count. Father is not the Son, and he's not the Spirit, and the Spirit is not the Father. Three and only three. But wait, John said, I'm the voice of Isaiah, who cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of Jehovah, and that Jehovah is Jesus. So Jesus is not the Father, he's not the Spirit, but he's still Jehovah, Jehovah the Son. And you tell me why we're Trinitarians. And you tell me why Ignatius was a Trinitarian. 
And you tell me why Irenaeus was a Trinitarian. Justin Martyr was a Trinitarian. Tertullian was a Trinitarian. Hippolytus, Hippolytus was a Trinitarian. Novatian was a Trinitarian. Gregory of Nyssa, Gregory of Nazianzus, Athanasius, Basil. Why all true believers, true saints, true warriors, true martyrs were all Trinitarians? Now let me end it with this exhortation. Protestants, you already love the Bible and you believe it's the perfect word of God. Orthodox, Catholic, Assyrian Church of the East, Coptic, you too love the Bible and you believe it's the perfect word of God. But here's the thing. Orthodox, Catholic, Coptic, Assyrian Church of the East, you got to read the Bible more. You got to fall in love with the Bible and know it's the voice of God. Listen to it. Either play it on YouTube or read it. Saturate yourself in the Bible because I am certain that you haven't heard this kind of evidence from the Bible proving that what you've been taught, the Trinity, Jesus, God Almighty in the flesh, the God-man. Holy Spirit is a person. That the evidence is overwhelming in confirmation of these truths. And now exhortation to the Protestants. Protestants, enough shallow reading of the Bible. Enough. Go deep. Seek the face of the Spirit. Help me understand, not just read. Please help me understand and then give me the power to live it, to be in love with Jesus and obey Jesus and, and die for Jesus and glorify Jesus because he's worthy. We love you, Father. Son of God, Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we are in love with you. Enslave us to yourself and enslave my daughters to yourself. Convict their mother, chase and shame her. Shame Michelle and Martin to fear you, Holy Spirit, to repent. Because if she repents, then I'll have my children. Keep us united to Jesus in love with Jesus. Give us the health we need to glorify the Lord. The boldness to glorify without shame, without compromise. Even if it means, Holy Spirit, by your power, we go to jail and be killed. Give us the grace to do it, please, to be doers of the word. And provide our daily bread until it's our time to be with Jesus or until he comes. Maran Athe, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we love you in Jesus' name. God bless you. You guys got two amazing sessions. And that's not because of me, because Holy Spirit is amazing. Re-listen to these sessions. Hit the like button. Get more people to listen. Study the arguments. Upload them to your YouTube channels. Make clips and teach others. Folks, the end is very near. Jesus is going to return, return sooner than ever. And we're going to see the God-man in his glorified body. Luminant, luminescent, I'm sorry, illuminated with his divine glory, his light filling the earth to judge the living and the dead. Let's be ready to meet him and not be ashamed. He's coming. Folks, Jesus is alive. He's real. He's not make-believe. He lives. He's almighty. And because he lives, we live. If he didn't live, there would be no life. Let's be prepared to meet him. May he come sooner than later. We love you, Lord Jesus. God bless you. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Lord willing, if God wills, take care. Pray for my angels, please, that I can hug them again. Take care.